everyone, welcome to Dungeons and Chickens, episode 18, the podcast where chickens fight back. Book. Book. Wow. <laughs> so, last time, our heroes, after escaping the ruins, and I say escaping, being like exiting the near vicinity, <laughs> uh, after being spotted by seemingly steel fist legion soldiers after glimmers in the distance moving closer and closer to them after a certain amount of time our heroes decided to take refuge within these large ruins and seemingly were surrounded on all sides by a mysterious man who seemed to call out who are you when when virus used a phrase in the steel fist legion that knowingly all soldiers would know after ensuing after a couple of moments and a little bit of arguing um, outside, um, our, the Steel Fist Legion soldiers ended up actually entering in this building. And after entering the building, they did a number of solutions. They thought up a number of different ideas. Um, archers were shooting at them the whole time, and they discussed with the seemingly off, with a, an officer of the Steel Fist Legion, who is particularly... In, an interesting character. He was very, it was very buff. He had a, he had like a twirly mustache, um, rugged black hair, and he was not hundred percent into Lyris's excuse of being the brother or nephew of cousin. Um, the second, the the, sir, the second in command currently of the Steel Fist Legion, and he was ordered. He ordered the Steel Fist Legion soldiers he had with him to apprehend them. But our heroes went and go, went on basically underground back into the large chamber. It had a slight engagement with the general down there um, after messing around with a rope ladder and such. They um, were able to charm the, gen the officer into becoming not hostile towards them. Our heroes then tricked them into getting locked underground, essentially, into this large chamber for the foreseeable future while they headed off and one last kicker before the last session ended was that Beatrix, who has been along for a number of episodes, has decided that she's going to handle the second half of her, of her personal quest herself as she believes she's able to handle um, Mr. Woodway and get the curse all her back. And the heroes made a promise to each other to meet each other in Aspecia. And I believe that is where we will pick up today. And it, it it is around midday because you guys had this engagement in the morning. Lunch time. And I would say it, it, it was like an hour and thirty minutes of of, of uh, scuffle, I guess. Um, they our heroes have also leveled up from last game, and they will, but they still have a bit of damage on them. Yeah. Okay. So when we when Beatrix left us, we were outside the ruins. Yes, that like when yes. we take a bite. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, at the moment, Lyris will kind of be, uh, you know, just kind of gathering himself together. You know, we've just had quite a quite a, quite a sad moment saying goodbye to uh, our new companion uh, Beatrix, um, and uh, I kind of like. Have a little bit of a look around, and you kind of see Lyris kind of looking off into the distance, uh, kind of easterly, um, seemingly quite uh, deep in thought for a short, short amount of time, just whilst uh, people are chilling. All right, so what would everybody else be doing at this time? Um, I know that I will be watching Beatrix leave. Um, and I will continue to watch her until she disappears from sight. Um, and even then I'll be kind of a, a little bit like Lyris, you know, I went through all of that to get my sister and now I've got to willingly let her walk away from me now. So yeah, very, um, kind of keeping, keeping to myself, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of emotions right now, but I, I, they're not, not important right now. Yeah, one note while Beatrix is wa is walking off, she never turns back around after she said goodbye to you guys. Rude. <laughs> does not does not turn back around to face you guys ever, like after she said goodbye. Because mm. she was crying, she didn't want to show us off sight. <laughs> but regardless, she's seemingly made her way 
correctly and safely across the um, this marsh, this difficult swamp, back the way you guys seemingly made it. And she is a bit of a journey ahead of her, but she's soon out of the distance, out of your... She's not jogging, she's doing a ginger walk, and she she is walking away, and after about 30 minutes, I would say she gets out of sight fully. Just because it's a flat land, you could pretty you could see pretty far. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But yeah. Uh, where is Salem at this point in time? Salem reconvened with you guys after um, Rhea would talk to her after Rhea called her in. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I asked yeah. her to shit down the hall, and she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, I would say at this point, um, Delilah, you can you can hear like food, 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 <laughs> like from the pit from Salem. <laughs> so you can still like, you can still hear Salem pretty well. I'm just ignoring her at this point. <laughs> uh, but. Maybe. Okay, um, so uh, after a short amount of time, presumably we're just kind of just standing there a bit like, like not lifeless, but like we're all just kind of minding our own business. Um, Lyra just kind of takes a bit of a big, ah, right, and kind of turns around and says, I think it's time for a, um, a t no, family meeting and uh, kind of like walks over to uh, the other two. Family? Well, I, 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 you know, I think... Uh, with a capital F? With a capital F, exactly. Um, no, hu hu huddle in, huddle in. I've got, uh, I've got uh, a proposal for you. And I kind of like... Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I kind of like uh, t <laughs> take, take a bit of a, a squat, um, you know, hands on my knees sort of thing uh, with a bit of a nervous smile going on what kind of a weird fucking plan do you have Lyra <laughs> well I can already I can tell just by the look on your face that you're going to tell me something and I'm not going to like it well I uh, maybe um so now that we've uh, sent Beatrix on her way, we have to address the 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 original reason we banded together, and that is we were told to raise an army. And don't get me wrong, we are pretty powerful. Yeah, we are quite powerful right now. Um. But I can't help but notice we're dwindling in numbers, and we could use an army. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're speaking English, so I'm understanding most of it. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, you know, as, as you guys know, I used to uh, be part of the um, Steel Fist Legion, <clears throat> and... Uh, well, whilst I was growing up there, um, obviously I, I, I know my fair share about the Steel Fist Legion, and I have a idea of how we can sort of acquire an army. Okay, keep going. Go on. Okay, okay, so... Obviously, the Steelfist Legion, they, uh, you know, we've had a bit of a run in with them. And as you can see, they're not exactly the most uh, easily persuaded type. Uh, you know, the the person we literally just uh, charmed, albeit we did manage to kind of get away from him. He was just a uh, an officer. And uh, there are many of those to try and convince, as well as a vice ruling and then the ruling commander. Now. I know of a way that we could get them all on our side at the same time, but it would be a bit of a 
risk. More, more for me, more for me, but um, hopefully you guys will help me. Anyway, let me let me start to uh, get ahead to the point a little bit. So, what kind of risk? Uh, it's just, you know, my life for an army, but we can worry about the details in a bit. Um... Yeah, d- 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 we can worry about the details in a bit. Um, so, let me lay it down nicely for you. The Steelfish Legion is a very traditional army they they have a lot of core beliefs not all good ones admittedly that you know that there's reasons why i got out but one of them is that a leader is not born into leadership it is earned i think that's one thing actually we probably can agree with anyway the ruling commander of the steelfish legion the the one voice that will command the entire legion no one ever questions will only ever lose their title, not by way of promotion, but by way of contest. So how it, uh, how it works is if, the, uh, if you are in the Steelfish Legion, um, and I did consider doing this back when I was 12, but I thought maybe I need a couple more years to practice. If you believe that the ruler of the Steelfish Legion is not up to scratch. If you feel like he's, uh, he or she is not doing a good job or you feel like they could, you know, they are not uh, following the best intentions for the Steelfish Legion, you can challenge the leader uh, to a duel. Um, now, the, 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 the good news here is if you beat the ruling commander in said duel, uh, you take over ruling command. Now, you do have to be a Steel Fist Legion uh, born and bred to be able to do this. So, unfortunately, you two are out of the question here. But if I was to challenge Jalen Shadow to a duel for command of the Steel Fist Legion, well, I could get the Steel Fist Legion. Now, if I lose, I would die. That's fair enough. But if I win we'd get the Steel Fist Legion. Are you with me so far? Well, I'm not particularly happy about this, considering I'm assuming this is a fight to the death. Details, details, but um, yes. Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's a fight to the death then? Yes. Okay. But, you know, I'm... No. Okay. Um, I mean... Uh, if you lose, what are we going to do? I won't lose. Well, <laughs> as long as he's not a golem, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I've never seen him before, but... Uh, you know, he was the ruling commander when I was uh, a boy, so I can only imagine that by now he's probably walking with a cane, so I'm sure I'll be fine. Um, if he's been ruling commander for that long, doesn't that kind of show how strong he is? Yeah, there's probably a reason for that, you know? If he's in his, like, his 60s, 70s, and he's still the commander... Are we going to go up against this guy and he's going to be like a nine foot fucking behemoth? I mean, valid points, valid points. Uh, Maybe no one's ever contested. Maybe maybe no one's ever contested him before. And, you know, I I feel like with you guys by my side, chanting my name. One v one. We're not your cheerleaders. I will be cheering for you and I will be be making in me. But I'm not a cheerleader. I never said the. I will I never be said doing gymnastics and tumbling, and I will be getting out pom poms <laughs> if I'm not a cheerleader. Noted. The, sh- the shower gives you pom pom. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be like. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> a, it's a, it's a magic spell book. You get magic pom poms. <laughs> they shoot confetti every every short rest. Oh my god. Amazing. Now, if if we'll, we'll let that settle for a moment. Now, there is another catch. Oh joy! It's it's fine. 
it's about how we would do this. Now, obviously, you know, we, we've just had a quick run in with uh, uh, Stillfist Legion soldiers. And, you know, they're not exactly going to let us just walk up to Jalen and just, you know, contest. You know, we're going to have to try and get to him face to face without, you know, being murdered in the meantime. So okay. here's my suggestion. Now, I'm aware of a large town uh, that's uh, su south of here. Um, I passed through it when, when fleeing when I was younger called Droda. Um, this is the, the most easterly uh, town in the Ashenland, and it's likely going to be quite full right now of, uh, of orcs getting ready for presumably the war coming. Now, here's my thought. We travel to Droda, and uh, we use Alora's influence in this region from, from being here, hopefully to try and uh, convince them to let us pass and maybe see if they know any secret ways in. Now, I'll, just to be clear, I know, the, I know the sneaky way in when we get to the Felgon Keep of Milstead. I escaped when I was young. I'm a bit bigger now, but I reckon I can... Uh, I can reckon I can get through again, but I'm hoping that maybe we can find someone that can get us to the gates. So, yeah, I think we should go to Droda, um, befriend some orcs, see if they could sneak us into Felgon. I'll then sneak us into Milstead. We'll approach Jalen. I'll challenge him to a duel for command. I will win with your support. Not chilling. We take. Yeah, the Steel Fist Legion as our own. We march it north, them north, because there are them. And we fight for um, this realm. Excuse me. And like, and, and, like, and, like, and like, at this point, Lars just stands up and like, makes like fake uh, cheering noises, like, ah, ah, ah. Excuse me? Uh, Lyris? You see. Um, question. question. Wasn't there a reason that I, I don't know if you remember but we had to sneak <laughs> through the ashen land I, I you know i'd lightly brush upon it my father <laughs> was <laughs> fucking <laughs> kill me yeah but he was in brocog right you know surely you must have uh you know surely you 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 speak orcish surely you uh you you can word with travel we still if we're going to into any kind of town or settlement word will travel if somebody spots Alora. You say I have some sort of influence. I ran away. I left. I just... This could result in all of us being killed. Not only you, because of your crazy duel that I'm sure you'll win. I'm sure you will win. It's okay. I support you with that. I, I like just, your vote of confidence. Thank you. It's just... Uh... <sighs> That one oh. teeny tiny thing, which is family is a bitch. Indeed, indeed it is. Okay, well, one way or another, if we're going to go down this route, we're going to have to pass through Droda. It's the only way to get to the only bridge that goes to Felgon, and that bridge is almost certainly going to be surrounded by Stilfist Legion guards. So unless we have some way of disguising our way past, or unless we find someone in Droda that can find us a secret way that, other than that bridge, then we're never going to get into Felgon. And if we don't get to Felgon, then I, I, I don't know what plan B would be of finding an army. Shall we think about it on the road? I kind of like notice that the sun is starting to like, you know, slowly... At this point, it's it's been about thirty minutes or so. You're just slowly seeing the sun go by. I guess. Do shall shall we start heading south towards Droda anyway? You know, there's uh, I, there's nowhere else that we can particularly. You know, the, we, we we need supplies. We haven't, you know, we haven't been uh, through a town that we can actually shop in for a while. We need supplies. We need a, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I would appreciate a proper bed for a bit. Um. Oh my god, yes. See? Food. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like point, at, point to... Uh, swamp covered in puke. I point to uh, <laughs> Salem and be like, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's going to be pig food as well. 
Yeah. How about how about we go take a stop at Droda, and on the way we'll figure out exactly how we're going to uh, get into Felgon. Um, I like that idea, but uh, is the food come of a side of uh, angry, murderous father? Or does, oh, it does always it come does. Of that? Well, I would like to think that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but considering that Droda is the most easterly town. Um, in the Ashenland, like I said, it's likely going to be that Droda is going to be mostly full of soldiers getting ready for a fight. And if I know anything about the uh, about the religious folk, is they aren't normally very hands on. I wouldn't be surprised if they were all actually retreated to Brolcog. Uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if there actually isn't that many uh, from the actual church in Droda. What we'll do, Alora, is we'll do what we did before in Brolcog and we'll swap cloaks we'll swap clothes uh what do you yeah. puke um listen right <laughs> you have to make exceptions i mean I will, you were clean i will wash them as best as i can actually i think i have a spell for that do i can I press the digitation? Does that work? I think precipitation can be used to clean stuff, I, I think. Um, you instantaneously clean or soil an object no larger than one cubic foot. Okay, so if I got my cloak and I bundled it up really tight. It's a cantrip, right? And then it's cast... a cantrip. You can yeah. keep casting it until it's yeah. clean, I guess. Okay. I'll... Oh my god, why am I thinking this spell? I'm walking around covered in peaks this entire time. No, no, remember, I think Beatrix used void matter. Oh, to, yeah. To okay, good. But then you I'm just covered in, in my own puke in mud, now. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm just covered in mud, puke, as in, like, my own no puke. No puke, just mud. A little, but... bit, of, a little bit of blood, because I yes. got cut. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's fine, it's fine. Just a bit of cold water. The glamorous life of a hero. Yeah, just run under a cold tap, it'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, we've... Done it once, I guess we could do it again. I'm still not 100% sure about Lyra's taking over the, an army, but... Oh, no, that, we're, we're, still, we're still thinking about that. I'm, I am in no way convinced that that is going to be happening. But we still need to get into Failgon. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win that Maybe fight. Maybe in the meantime, we can think of something else that doesn't involve almost certain death. Well, I will say as well is... That uh, if we just simply kill him in any other fashion, uh, then the the normally the the second in command would just take command. The only way we can actually take him off of his role and take his place would be this duel. Um, but you know, the there might be in command probably isn't as strong as the main man in command. Would would have more luck killing him. Um, and I kind of like I look up for a moment and go, I you see me look up, I just go didn't hear me say this and I look back down and go maybe we could cheat with magic i was literally just thinking about that honestly Lyris, i was just thinking you know like you put just to sleep no i i would never suggest cheating did you hear that alora i mean i was i was thinking about it i'm not gonna we lie just, I, we just witnessed you Lyris, just witnessed me the goody two shoes the, oh no, I couldn't possibly break a rule. It would be sacrilegious. <laughs> Just suggest cheating in an honorable 1v1 duel? You're a changed man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a bad influence. I'm sorry, Lyris. I just kind of look up and say, Do you really heard nothing? Yeah, I was gonna suggest it. I'm not gonna lie. I was thinking about it. You know, put him to sleep. Maybe you know he gets tired. Charm I have no him, objection to that. Stab him. So um, at this point, Lyris, uh, <laughs> can I do a strength check to attempt to pick both of them up under one each arm and just go? Right, no time to lose then, and just grab them and start walking south. You couldn't you don't even need to do give a strength me a check for that. You can pick them up pretty back. easy. You couldn't even give me a piggyback whilst you had your shield. Yeah, but that was uh, <laughs> that I, I I'm pretty certain I had negative rolls on that because we were in like proper swampy mar marsh. I'll say you could, yeah. say you could just pick them up if you're just doing like if you're just yeah, just underarm. Yeah, you can just pick them up. Yeah, bruh. 
and just go. I mean, come they're on, relative, they're they're light. It's yeah. fine. Come on, we're going. Really, literally four foot ten and. Yeah. After, after like gonna, after like ten, Laura, like what the fuck? After like ten feet or so, you know, I'm I'm doing it almost for the just like, hey, come on, let's go. After like ten feet or so, I do kind of like put you down either side of me and kind of like just you to keep walking along Drop with me. me. On my face. <laughs> um, and I'll say that I like you know I do know which way I'm going. Um, because obviously we're right by the 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 river's edge. Um that splits for burning bogs and fail gone. Um, so I would, I would know to follow the coast, um, south. Okay. So at this point it's, I would say you guys have been chatting for like about 45 minutes or so. Um, and you continue, um, in a southeastern direction. You guys can just continue down straight to Droda. Meanwhile, can, thinking about plans, um, I would say it is going to be a a two day travel into to Droda, um, and that's because I mean, yeah, two day about a two day travel. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you guys will go ahead and continue this first day. Do you guys want to keep a um a relatively like? Do you guys want to like? have like a quick pace or like you want to go normal pace or do you want to go slower um so lyris is going to suggest and i'm going to kind of well i'll say out of character but i'll kind of lyris would have likely suggested early on when we started walking that um you know i would know that droda is roughly you know not not within a single day's walk so there's no point in there's no point in like hastily walking you know wasting our energy um because we're not going to get there by nightfall so lyris will have suggested that we just kind of walk at a natural pace okay so i'll say you guys are able to um continue on uh, i will say can i go ahead and have marching order uh yeah i'll likely um, be i'll likely be first considering that i'm kind of seeing the way i should say by the right, way Lyris. just just um i probably should add just so that for Rhea and bunny and those watching aren't be like how does lyris know so much like um without going too much into my backstory whilst out of character um when lyris uh left Felgon as part of his backstory the a large amount of my time about a decade was spent in kind of uh traveling through the ashen land therefore through droda up towards southern uh Faridos. so this kind of like apart from the foreboding bogs like this kind of like southeasterly region of ashen land is relatively relatively known to me as in like i know pounds and stuff no you know not exactly every single leaf on each tree but um yeah just before people are like is that meta that he's looking at a map? Like, no, I, Lyris would know. Okay. Um, so, Lyris, you're first. Alora, where would you want to be in this in this lineup? And uh, Salem is Salem will be with you. Um, I guess I'll probably be in the middle then. In the middle, okay. And then Delilah will be last. Yeah, I'll bring up the rear. Okay. So you guys continue on. And after, honestly, just a full day's travel, nothing really seems to catch your eye at least um with like with your past perceptions you guys don't really seem to notice anything along the way that would be wait how many days travel uh two days are we not but, camping? I mean, we're, no i'm saying like this is your travel this is you're traveling for the rest of the day until you camp oh so, right i see yeah so you guys don't seem to notice anything this when you guys start walking around like one o'clock or something yeah yeah in the afternoon and then you guys get there and by the time it goes sunset going into nightfall you guys are confident that even at a normal pace you guys made some good time and if you're looking at the map you're you're right you're below the g a little bit yeah so for those that can are on youtube they can see that they're like right below they're around the g now um but it is around time to make camp unless you guys want to keep going um or and suffer a point of exhaustion up to you no, no, we'll, um, I, I'm, Lyris is going to suggest and say, look, you know, we, we haven't even left the foreboding bogs yet. We're still going to have a little bit in the Ashen Land to, uh, to go through. So I'm going to suggest that we, uh, we get camp. Let's, you know, get some of our health back, um, and start the day fresh. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So if we are, you want to go ahead and set up camp, uh, we'll go ahead and save the rolls and just say you guys, you found a, um, a relatively higher, like, patch of grass. 
yeah. that is it is able to you know drier than the mud around you and it has like it has a tree in the middle um and you guys are able to keep camp there and unless you guys have anything well would you guys like to do anything um before you guys head to sleep for the night and then we start taking watch rolls um nothing in particular for me i think i would probably um as i did kind of like towards the start as i'd i'd take out my my tome um and i'd kind of be leafing through that um just as like a i guess like a a backup isn't the right word uh just to kind of occupy my mind okay um laris is likely going to be you know just sitting around the campfire that we've that we've made just uh um, I'm, I'm likely you will have be sorry. What I would likely be doing is um, I will I will have pulled out one of the uh, oh yeah I still have them one of the uh, legion daggers that I acquired a little while ago. I'm gonna be kind of just like almost like playing with that in my hand, kind of looking down at it. Um, you know, considering how close we are to uh, the Felgon region, you know, the fact we've had recent encounters with the Stilfus Legion, the fact that we're potentially making a plan to go in there, uh, you know, all of this is uh, starting to bring back, you know, a lot of memories for, for Lyris. Um, so, yeah, he's kind of just, like, very much, you know, uh, deep in thought whilst kind of just fiddling with this uh, Legion stagger. But, you know, if, if anyone ever spoke to him throughout the evening, he would, like, almost, like, snap out of it and, you know, go back to his, like, heartful self. But whenever you kind of, like, sneak a look at him, he's kind of just very deep in thought. All right. Um, so would you guys like to go into night watch rolls then? Um, whilst I'm looking through my book, okay. I'm going to look at Lyris and kind of peek at him whilst he's looking at the dagger. Um, and I'm just, just going to say, um, Lyris. Yeah. Oh, yes. Why were you in the Steel Fist Legion? Well, I was. Um, I was born into it. It, it was. Uh, and until uh, until I left, it was all I knew. I. Uh, you know, who really questions what you're born into? I guess you know. Um, until I had a mind of my own, I didn't. Oh, it's all I really. It's all I really knew. Far, my whole world was still for Legion. Hashtag sameies. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all have. Uh, I think it's one thing that we can all agree. You know, bonds us together a little bit. We've all been dealt a. A, not necessarily a bad hand, but we've all been dealt a hand that we didn't wish to be dealt. And there's, there's something uh, positive to say about the fact that we've all managed to change our paths for the better. I can agree with that. Me too. Hashtag sameies. <laughs> Why did you leave? I, uh, I, um, didn't, uh, agree with how the Stillfist Legion, how the Stillfist Legion dealt with certain circumstances. My, uh, I, I left quickly. Let's just say that much. I uh, I saw things uh, of how the Steelfish Legion treated themselves within how they punished what they would consider crimes and. I had a choice to flee or likely come under the same hammer. Well, going by how that big 
officer guy treated his soldiers. I'm not entirely surprised. And again, I can relate to that. Like I said, I kind of. Oh, sorry. No, 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 go. On. No, I was like, if you if you've got something else that you want to role play, I was literally just going to be like, I was just going to stop the conversation there. But if you got something else to say, go for it. No, no, I was going to, I was going to kind of start to wrap up there as well, and just be like, you know, like I said, we, uh, we all have things that we've ran, th ran from. Um, hopefully, yeah, we've all run into something a little bit brighter. Yeah, and like after sensing that, like the conversation is over, Delilah just kind of she turns back to her book. I just kind of um, like yeah, and Lyris noticing that he's kind of like. His sad, his kind of like sad, mysterious story has kind of uh, made things a little bit, a little bit orcs. Uh, he kind of just gets up and goes, <clears throat> "Shall I um, shall I take first watch? Why don't you, uh, you guys get some sleep? Um, we've had a very, very long day or so." Okay, I'll take second. All right, and I guess and so um, unless. Oh, or just wants to sleep. Uh, I guess I'll take third. Funny. So. I'm not fucking put to talk. <laughs> Sorry, brain turned off for a second. Uh, can you repeat that, please? You just want to take third watch then as well? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. All right, so first watch, Lyris, go ahead and roll perception check for me as everyone else drifts off to sleep for a little bit. 19. Let's go. You, you keep you're very aware and you know that this territory nothing is certain. So being being a very watchful individual as you are, you take in every single nuance in the landscape but it seems relatively quiet. There's I mean, you can hear and the just like yeah, there's mosquitoes, they're just occasional come over and you just like hit them on your yeah. And then the other, like you're, you're here like frogs you like hear frog ribbits throughout the night it's a beautiful starry <laughs> sky out though <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean that was a burp that was just perfect timing <laughs> yeah um there is a you know it's star a very starry night as well um pretty very nice night though but nothing seems to catch your eye at least in the in these in the hours that you're on watch sounds good so uh, Delilah, I believe you are up next. I got 17. It's a clear night. You got a 17. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So you as well are very on top of it. And after encountering the Steel Fist Legion and becoming, you know, very aware of what the Steel Fist Legion is like and what they do, um, you're, it caught your eye and you least are now more aware of how close you are to Failgon territory and how much of reality it is that you might get to see him again. So just be on the cautious side is always good. But um, you take in any nuances. Um, for a while, nothing seems to catch your eye or trigger you off or anything uh -huh. like that. Until... That's when you say for a while. Yeah, yeah he said uh, until. <laughs> you recognize a familiar voice as well. You oh. recognize <gasps> a voice. Um, <gasps> I mean, uh, yeah, cool. You look <laughs> along the you look on the tree that is kind of to your left, uh, around like the fire that you guys made, and you kind of hear this like, "You are so interesting." And you look over and you see this woman whose hair seems to defy gravity. This feminine figure. Um, hair goes basically vertical, just and drifting and just kind of like free floating, um, and but kind of it's kind of like a dark bluish of sorts, um, and she's wearing the dark purple robes that you remember in your vision as well, and um, but she's laying up against the tree, kind of like foot up, foot against the tree, just standing up, but she's like going and looking up at the stars, and you can see like the the, the purple um, of her eyes basically just filling her entire eyes. Are you really here, or are you just 
creating an image? Well, how much can a person really be here? I mean, I feel like that's up for debate, darling. Oh, that's so philosophical. I'm going to, like, pick up a little stone and, like, throw it at her. Okay, so you, you toss a stone at her, and it just phases through her? Yeah, I thought so. Just had to check. I mean, what did you expect? Uh, I don't know. I was kind of hoping it could bounce off your knee. You are an extremely interesting host, let me tell you. You are unlike anyone I've ever possessed before. What's so interesting about me? Your conviction, your family, is really inspiring. Uh, I mean, I thought you were going to say my family's insane, in which case, yeah, I, I could understand that. There are aspects of that which are true. Um, of course, they worship me, which is never a bad idea. But I do... Th I am enjoying being along for the ride, at least. And one, one thing I wanted to ask you personally. Why'd you let her go? Huh? You, you, did, all that, you did all that work to get this being of cosmic level power you just let her free in the swamp to go back to who knows where and do who knows what why i feel like i'm Putting her more in danger. Having her here. What you feel you've like you're the danger? Well, I don't fully understand what you've done to me. I don't fully understand what's going on. Who this god is. What this heart fucking, I don't know. Heart stealer, heart burner, heart fucking, I don't give a shit. I don't understand any of it, but all I know is that taking her into Failgon is the worst possible choice I could make. And she can't come with us. First off, to answer your question about what's going on, lovely things are going on. Lovely things. And you will appreciate what I'm doing for you soon enough, I promise. But... As far as the rogue called Rayon, he's batshit, let me tell you. Absolutely insane. He was, oh my word. He is just very out there with his ideas. I haven't met him personally, but I have been in council with the gods before. Not, I'm not a god, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm up there. But um, he's that shit. Um, I don't know why he's on the he's, he's even a god in the first place. I don't even know who made him, but that was a bad idea. Why are you helping me do this? Most people, most deities or beings, when you create a pact, it's give and take immediately, straight away. Why are you being lenient with me? And giving me 10 years. I want to let you experience life because I feel, although I'm, I am the most uncaring asshole you will ever meet, oh, I do think you would, do, you would get to enjoy your life a little bit before I take it over. And I do think that your conviction and family situation has earned you just a little bit of time. Just a little bit. Not to get too ahead of yourself. But I do think that if I can get credit for stopping one of the most powerful beings ever in the universe, I think I would like to take that too. So think of it more as me, me being nice, but the real reason is I'm selfish. But 
for posterity's sake, we'll just say because I appreciate you. I hate how alike we are. Oh, darling, I love how alike we are. Yeah, I thought you would. Well, I just came to check in and see what's, uh, what's going on. Not that I don't already know, but um, I just wanted your input because, you know, it's a two-way street, sister. We got to make things work from here on out. And she kind of like just, it just like flicks a, like a pebble at you and just hits you like on the, in the shoulder. And she says, we're in this together, whether you like it or not. But you got 10 years. Remember that. All right. So don't waste it. And if you waste it, you're a good host gone to waste. I don't plan on wasting it. I'm going to get what I need to do done. Lovely. Well, get some shut eye. Get some much needed rest. There's a lot of puke in your future. <laughs> I like I'm not allowed to for, I'm not allowed to fortune tell for you, but geez, you are like a puke magnet anyway. I've got an issue. Yeah, it's it, I don't you could probably should get that checked out by a doctor or something. That's that's that is, is uh, it's too expensive, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um I am with you, but it's more of a mutual benefit. So have fun, and I'll see you around. I'll be watching with intrigue all the time. And then she just kind of like, it's gone. You just blink, and she's gone. Beach. I will never get used to that. And I'll just kind of just keep, I'll, I'll keep my concentration as much as I can for like the rest of the workshop for that. Okay. And based on your role, you keep a pretty good one. So, Aurora, next up, you go ahead and roll a perception check for me for your watch. Oh, okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where the fuck? There it is. <laughs> I can't read. Boop. <laughs> Right. Not as good as you guys. <laughs> to be honest, they set a high bar with those rolls. Um, it is, I guess, surprise, surprise, it's pretty quiet. Um, it's the noises of the swamp, while utterly annoying in the day, it's more peaceful at night when all the creatures are just kind of doing their own thing, but it does not seem to, any of these noises and such don't seem to stir you um, or bother you. you in fact, it's, it feels nice to be back in a land you're used to. The routines and the action winds is something that you, in particular, have missed a lot. Um, so oh, yeah. you're you're at ease, um, and you keep a you keep a decent watch, um, and nothing seems to disturb your watch, and nothing seems to affect mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. any any surroundings. And with that, I believe it is going to be. The sunrise as well. Yeah. So oh. at the at, at this point, you guys are coming to consciousness and getting ready for the morning. So if there's anything you got to, guys would like to do this morning, I would so yeah, just go ahead and tell let me know. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and start um fresh. It, it is pretty early in the morning. You guys went to sleep at like basically I think like nine o'clock. Um something like that and so because you guys were beat up beat the hell up so everybody going to take a long rest regain your hit points and such and such oh yeah otherwise i believe um yeah morning routines everybody unless uh, other than that we can get on the road yeah so um lyris would have uh you know considering i went to bed uh, uh sorry considering obviously i did the first watch um i'd have had a decent sleep i would i would have got up around uh pretty much at first light um, and I would have done my normal sort of routine, which would have been to go take myself, go kind of take myself to somewhere a bit more private, somewhere a bit more away from uh, the group. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would have just, just kind of on my knees, just in prayer, you know, listening to all the, the, the sounds of the morning. I appreciate in a foreboding bog, it's not going to be exactly the most, uh, you know, it's not going to be like tons of birds and stuff, but, you know, just, uh, enjoying the morning, uh, ambiance and, uh, yeah, just convene you uh, with um, Darilla, and I uh, 
prepare my uh, spells for the day, um, which I'm doing literally now. I'm going to take that one instead. Thank you very much. Um, Cries and sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and then once I've done once I've done that, I kind of uh, meet back up with the group. Uh, you know, make make my breakfast. I'm gonna, my, uh, I'm gonna eat my oh, in my last ration. That's it. I've yep, just eaten my last ration, ration. ration. Check everybody. Oh, I'm probably like super hungry. Uh, if, if that was the case, then I, I I split. If you have nothing, um, Rhea, I split my ration in half uh, for yourself, so we have half each. I promise I will buy rations this time in trade. Um, <laughs> I just Rhea, never got around to uh, buying them. Before Beatrix left, she also handed you off eight rations. Oh, nice. So, okay, so I eat it for one. Or to... I mean, just, just eight rations. I just wanted, because, I mean, she would have... She would have given you supplies, so we can just go yeah. back and say she just gave you some equipment as well before she left. Okay. Holly. Cool, so yeah, uh... I, I eat my last ration to myself then, um, tidy up camp a little bit, and get ready to go. Okay. So go ahead, and you guys pack up, uh, t kick some dirt in the fire, and head off. Um, if anybody would like to make a perception check, anybody who would be perceptive at this point, that like checking their surroundings at this um, point. Lyris uh, would have I most... Would... Yeah, I was going to say, Lyris would have done as well, you know, considering that I'm... Uh, I, I would have been the one, uh, as per normal, kind of like pushing to make a move. You know, again, I'm looking around the area because I'm making sure I'm heading in the right direction. Okay, if you don't, guys don't mind, um, one of you, you guys can both roll perception or one of you guys can roll with advantage. What's your um, uh, passive? Plus three. Uh, yeah, I only have a plus one, so I'll, I'll let, um, I'll let uh, Delilah roll with advantage. <laughs> well, I've got two sixes. Can, can we just see what mine would have been? I know that, like, it's... Well, then. All right, so don't mine, roll the my, six mine would have been fourteen, but nope, we go with the six. All right, <laughs> yeah, just um, so busy funny. night. You could, um, but you guys are still recovering from your wounds, so understandable. It's a bit hard to keep track of everything, but um, you guys uh, march ever so closer to Droda, and I would say upon. Like you guys leave like ten o'clock, so I would say about four hours in to your mark to your walk, or um, you guys see. So in in the Ashlands, are used to the trees being um really spread out over the whole area, and they're very sparse. You come across a um a grouping of about eight that are kind of like just in a group together. They're kind of. They aren't like clumped, but they're in like the near vicinity within each other. I would say like they're some are like twenty feet from each other. Other, I mean, others are like thirty. Others are like five. It's mm -hmm. a random scattering of trees. It looks like. Okay. Other than that, um, you guys continue on. I would say at this point, um. I'm guessing it's I'm guessing it's another whole day's travel to Droda. Uh yeah. So after this, after this rest, you would be you'd be like getting there midday. So like so we've got roughly a whole day, another rest, and then up to midday to get there roughly. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Cool. Um. So as we're kind of like traveling along this day, um, I'm gonna turn to the other two and just be like. All right, so I uh, I understand that uh, my initial thoughts were a li you know upon reflection I guess it what would be a little bit of a silly idea just to try and announce Alora's presence as a way of you know potentially uh, gaining some sort of advantage if you really do think that uh, your father's going to have that many connections in Droda as well. Um, so how do we suggest uh, tomorrow we we go about this? Should we try and do like another disguise or shall we try and give you a new identity temporarily? Do you know, do you think we're far enough away they wouldn't even recognize you maybe? I mean, it has been a very, a very long time since, you know. I mean, I mean, we could always try a disguise, you know. Um, it doesn't hurt to be extra cautious, uh, you know. 
Uh, like uh, Delilah mentioned, we should probably swap clothes. You should keep um, your hair tucked in as well. Yeah, my it's hair so is bright. probably one of yeah. the most <laughs> giveaway factors that, hey, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. I'm Virus. Back, bitches. <laughs> um, as we're discussing, like, you know, swapping, you, with your Hello. perception role, I would say, you look and you kind of look at one of the trees. The branches were different before. They were uh -oh. in a different position. It moved a little bit. It's humorous, Mara. I the, kind of... The, the tree branches moved a little bit. When you say moved, are we talking like... Yeah, you remember them in a different spot? You remember them in a different spot? Like, so if a branch was like here, it would be like... It, it'd be, if it was facing like this way, it would be facing this way now. Right, so I see. Like, so it's actually like, okay... I am um, okay. I kind of like whilst we're talking, I kind of do a bit of a, a double take and just and kind of I I stop walking uh, as well whilst this happens. So presumably the others stop. Um, I just go. Uh, we we definitely haven't walked in a circle, have we? Wait, yeah. what do you mean? I don't think so. I I could have. And I know we've walked past a lot of trees. Maybe that I'm is the majority of this place. Maybe I'm just maybe the heat of the foreboding bogs is getting to me a little bit, but I I could have swore that uh, those trees looked different before. As if, as if as if someone's replanted another tree in a different format over there. I'm going to take my court staff and I'm going to cautiously approach. And I mean, like, really cautiously. I'm, like, carefully inching my way over there in, like, a really stupid fashion. And I'm, like, reaching my court staff out towards it and I'm just going to tap the tree with it. But just, just before you do that, Laris is going to reach out and go, Careful! You might get a splinter. Fuck you. You tap the tree. I Nothing happens. I tap it again. You tap it again. Same force or harder? Or... Same force. All right. Nothing. Okay. I tap okay. on it, but I do the. Duh, 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 duh. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Nothing. So, so okay, Lyris. Straighten up and look at Lyris and say, You're trying shit, mate. I kind of uh, walk up. I, I'm, I'm walking up as she's tapping it. Um, and I, I kind of like pull the, the branch that like I, the, the branch I specifically spotted was different, almost just like, you know, just giving it a bit of, you know, like when you pull on a branch to bend it a little bit and just kind of, I don't know, Lyris is thinking like, it, it has this moved? Is this, you know, is just, just kind of inspecting. This is a proper tree, isn't it? You're only a strength check for me. Just oh. see how well. Nine. This is where we've walked into like. A fey world somehow. I'm pretty certain. I just want to say, I'm pretty considering that I've got a plus four in strength. I'm pretty certain that I haven't had a single yeah, strength roll this well. entire campaign. A single strength. Every time I've done a strength check in this campaign, I haven't actually managed to do well. But I got a nine. So you pull one of the branches down enough that you think it would snap. Honestly, like the the amount of force you use for it, the tree branch wraps around your waist and then goes and does like an overhead swing and slams you onto the ground on the other side oh you get, snap. You get picked up and slammed you like are like uh like a like a hulk to loki swing. like hulk yeah, to you, loki yeah you just you you do like a rainbow arc over the tree and then just hit the other side Ooh. and you're con no. you, you're considered grappled and you take two points of bludgeoning damage ouch um and with that I would like you guys to roll initiative. Against a tree? Clearly not just the tree. Alright, all right. let's see. Uh, the I got back, back, back with the battle, battle, map, uh, the battle map in just a second. Alright, so I'm going to roll my initiative as well. Right, yeah, yeah. So go, yeah, go ahead and everybody roll initiative. Oh, I got a good initiative for once. Ooh. Look at you go. Good. Look at me go. Yeah. Yo, I got 19 for the audio podcast. 19, okay. So, Maria got a 14. 
Nice from funding as well. This is actually the best that we've. I mean, I think. Watch the fucking no, actually, tree I get I don't twenty. Think I'm usually very good right. at initiatives. So. so, when when Lyris gets pretty much launched in a rainbow arc, but that is still is still um, grappled, um, and slams to the other side, um, the other trees. I would say four other trees begin to move and shift in a way where you can subtly discern uh humanoid features from them and so these like lumbering <laughs> lumber lumber these lumbering <laughs> giants um basically start to take form and you can see there are four other um uh awakened trees in your area so i will get it here and so virus let me just get your dice real quick Noise. Not noise. All right. So I forgot the dice represents you guys. So for you. For me. Where am I? So where would you guys. Okay. So you guys, if you guys were noticed these trees, would you guys walk around them all? Would you think? Or would you. I mean, where like, am I? Exactly. Through them. Oh, uh, I well, mean, this we, we would have yeah. been. We would have been taking. You need to. Like, as in, I feel like that's something you. It's like, it, it's like a um we so, were taking okay. the most direct we were taking the most direct path so uh if going past those trees was the most direct path then we would have walked straight through them uh if it was kind of like off the path to our sides then we would have walked past it um by the way you described it i would say we were we were walking yeah. like if you're looking at uh well, you can't see my camera can you um I feel like we would have been walking past it because you said that Lyris kind of spotted off to my side, but then we walked directly towards them. So we, we kind of approached the trees. Okay. So Lyris, um, you guys walked through... We, we're, we'll go ahead and just say you guys walked through them. And Lyris, you were here. Can you see this? Yeah. You were right there. Um, but you are grappled now. And you... Um, it'll take me a minute... And you are over on this side, so you're behind this. You're kind of behind that guy now. What's so you that? Can kind of see your. What's the green square? A that rock. bush. Oh, it's a rock. Okay. Yeah. So log two, like um, sizable marshes, just a yep. little bit. Um, and then now Delilah and Awar. Where would you guys be? I guess you guys were behind Lyris, right? So you guys would be close together. I mean, I was in the middle, and Delilah was. I mean, Delilah was poking the tree. Actually, yeah, I was next to the tree. I was, was like, but side, I had like my quarter staff between. Was right here, right? Yeah, would you say? I had like my quarter staff between me and the tree. And a war, would you be? Like, would you be right here? Well, I'd say it was a little bit closer because I was kind of in inspecting the tree too. So yeah. Okay, so would you want? Would you be around here? Do you guys yeah. are all around this tree? Okay. Um, and we don't have to put down a Beatrix dice. Do do do. All right. So. Top of the rounds. So initiative order I is. Top of the Merlin, do you? Um, let me just get an initiative order going. So it's Charlie got first. What with Lyris with a nineteen, pretty good. Yeah. But uh, Laura with a uh, 18. eighteen. Look at you go. Um, Rio with a fourteen. Best initiative roll to all to all of campaign. I think. Um, I actually might be. <laughs> <laughs> And I then always roll so shit with an issue. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, all right. So, uh, Charlie, yep. Iris is now considered grappled. So, Grapple. um, you are actually the first up to go, my friend. So, um, so how do I get out of being grappled? So, for grappling, you, you have to make, I believe, a you have to make a strength check to break out of it, and that would take your action to do so. Strength check or saving throw? We have to. It's a contested um, grappling check with the person. So, uh, do do a strength check for me, just to, okay. Um, so yeah, so I uh, I uh, you know start to try and uh, wriggle free. Um, you know, I'm I'm also going to try and see if I can wriggle to maybe get to one of my legion daggers as well to maybe try and like you know uh, uh, cut the branch a little bit or cut cut the uh, the vines. Um, and roll a 19. Okay. Um, what a good time for my strength check to finally come through. Okay, <laughs> that he rolled a 15. So you are no longer grappled. But nice. 
that uh, does take your action to do so, but you still have movement and such, um, and bonus action if you'd like to take it. Uh, I won't for movement. Can I move around this tree without getting an attack of opportunity? Yeah, you can like do stuff. You can do like go around him basically. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a, a couple. Of, I want to be um. Uh, wait, actually, sorry. Just to clarify, I know we had this conversation the other day, but I've forgotten. Did we say that if I was a single diagonal square from someone, that I could do my five foot fighting style protection? Yeah. So if you're okay, what's the range on your thing? So we, we so it's uh, my fighting style is protection five? is five feet. But did 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 we say that moving diagonally costs ten feet? But it's the if I was so if I was that space um, diagonal to rear. Uh, so move one yes. more one more to your right. Yeah, so if you moved here, she would be in the radius. Yes. Okay, cool. So I could okay. So I will move around I'll move around to there. Um Okay, so that's fifteen feet of movement, which I believe you're easily able to do. Uh and let me just double check. I don't think I have oh actually is that no, that's an action. Is this a bonus action? Nope, that's an action. Is this a bonus action? Mm -hmm. Uh nope. That well, yeah, uh, no. Uh, is that a bonus? Oh, it is. Um, no, 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 okay, no. Right. Nope, I do nothing. I, I, uh, no, I, so, uh, you know, in terms of role play, you know, I, I've, I've managed to reach my dagger, break the ropes and, and get out of being grappled. Um, I kind of get myself to my feet, uh, move around to where I said I've moved. And I'm, at this point, I'm kind of just like preparing myself for the fight. So I'm getting my shield out into my left hand, getting my, uh, long sword out into my right hand and kind of just kind of looking around my surroundings and getting myself ready for battle. Okay. So, um, you are pretty easily able to get out of the, um, just, he, he has a, he had a tight grip on your armor and with getting your dagger, you're able to kind of like cut the loose, the loose branches. They weren't exactly like stiff, um, all the way. So they, they weren't, weren't very hard to cut through. Um, very not stiff. <laughs> So that you're able to cut through them with ease with your um, steel fist wage and daggers, and you're able to redirect redirect yourself around these creatures. Th this creature, um, Aurora, you are up next, and Delilah, you're on deck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So oh, this is really hard. I didn't want to do this. I have to keep tapping in and out. Um. So I'm gonna cast fire bolt. I think that's what's called. Cool. Oh, okay. It's like Pokemon. Since it's a range attack, it would be at yeah. disadvantage. Uh, yeah, but aren't there like multiple ones? Oh yeah, it depends which one you fire out. Can I move fire? Oh yeah, you away can, yeah, you can fire and you can fire at any of these. Yeah. Or move. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Can I move far enough away to attack the one that Lyris just broke from, or is that not was is that not possible? Um, he would get an attack of opportunity on you. But yes. Uh, I don't know what that means. So an attack of opportunity. If you move out of, if you move out of his range, he, he can use his reaction to take a, to take a, a, a hit at you. Like, he can try and hit you. He gets a bonus chance to hit you. And does that mean that I won't be able to hit him back? No, you, it just means you might get you might take damage. Yeah. Fuck it, okay, I'll just do that you. then. <laughs> okay, so how, how far do you want to move out of his range? Um, uh, just far enough that I can hit the thing without having to roll disadvantage, so... Okay, um, I believe it's like 30 feet you have to get away from him, so... Um, so wait, is that... I thought, uh... I thought it was only like 10... Less, I thought it was less... only 10 feet. Okay, then you can get, like... You can get here. I would say, then... yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to be there, because I don't want to get too close to the other ones. And I'm sure there's a rule I'm not looking into, but I don't want to I mean, rule, like, rule to wire it, so... Yeah. yeah. So go ahead and yeah. you go ahead and just um take make a firebolt attack against this the center one. Um yeah, go ahead and make an attack. Fourteen. Yeah, Fourteen, yes. Fourteen hits. Go ahead and roll damage for me. Yeah. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Fire damage as well. Alright, so you hit this the um the center creature with um your firebolt and one second. All right, you and then um, you hit a you hit a spot on its like on its um, bicep, like where a bicep would be, and once you impact it, usually when you're when you're attacking your enemies, you're used to it kind of um, just it kind of fizzling out eventually, or they put pad up pretty quickly. Well, then you remember this this creature is made out of wood, 
Um, and so this, the, your your fire attack seems to do significantly more damage, um, like uh, because it starts to spread throughout his, his entire body, and he takes significantly more fire damage um, than you see most of your enemies who use firebolt against take. Um, but is that all you would like to do with your turn? You still have a bonus action and movement left. Um, I think that's okay for now. Thank you. Okay, Delilah, you're on deck. And the, or Delilah, you're up, and then Lyris, you're going to be up next, uh, soon after. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would like to look at these creatures and see if I recognize them in a way that, like, I, you know, I know potentially what they are, or, you know, I may have heard of them or something, I may have read about them or something like that. Okay, this, would, this is going to be interesting. This would be a... Uh, um, we'll say history check because it's like history of the area. So we'll go okay. ahead and just history check for you. I got a 24, and if I'd have had advantage, it would have been a natural 20 with 26. But Very yeah, I got 24. Nice. Okay. So this, these creatures, um, you know, are common to the southeast portion of the um foreboding bogs um and, and and that's why they they seem to they hunt together in groups um they 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 have a, a unique ability to f f have a false appearance so then while the trees themselves remain motionless like while they, if they so if they don't move um it, you cannot distinguish them from uh, a normal tree um you know that they um speak the language of Speak, they speak the language that was their, um, that, that a creator um, has assigned for them. So they were, these are um, arconically made, and, so, and then that they share the language with their creator. And um, you know, they're quite strong, and they are known for quite amount of deaths and for people that enter their photo boating bogs because they get squashed to death um, okay. by the, these, these creatures' strength. Okay. Do I know what kind of creature they are? As in, like they are considered I, I, I... a huge plant, <laughs> and <laughs> okay, and they are they have they're they're considered unaligned. Okay, so I'm sorry if this is a little bit too meta, but I mean, like you know, in like the list of creatures that you can you can have like you can have humanoids, you can have aberrations, celestial, elemental, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Does this fall under any of those? Nope. Okay. That's all uh, fine. Because I was thinking about getting a spell, um, and I thought, oh, you know, we're not really going up against that kind of stuff at the minute. And then, like, this happened. I was like, oh, this better not be. <laughs> this better not be the thing that that really cool spell would have helped me with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so go ahead and um, I believe, I'll say... Um, okay, because since I, since I didn't tell it to you beforehand, that would have cost an action to investigate, but I won't, because I did not... To explain that to you beforehand before you took it um i'll let you say this time that you could you still have your action okay oh well, thank you no problem um... dm screw up so i'm kind of <laughs> for it. um okay i am going to divert my attention to the two creatures behind me uh okay. which are yep yeah, nearby Alora, and i'm going to aim Eldritch Blast, and I'm going to do the two rays, and I'm going to aim one at one and another at another. Okay, I will say, I, th I believe, um, they, he, it does have a bit of cover, but I, it's not, he just, I think he just added a bit to his AC, let me see. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, because one of them is behind the rock. Yeah, behind the rock, and yeah. um, it's not a massive rock, but I think it, it does It's a nice boulder. Nice. It's a very <laughs> nice boulder. Um, no, I wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't consider it half cover. So never mind. He doesn't really have any cover. He's fine because he's too, he's he's a he's, a, he's considered a huge creature. So yeah. that he would not. It's not considered half cover. So never mind. Straight roll for you. Okie dokie. I got a three, a three, and I got a six. Okay. So Great. and your bonus is I think it's like plus eight, right? Oh, uh, it's plus seven. Yeah. So I got a ten, and I got. Uh, 13? Um, the second one just hits. Okay. Cool. Um, we'll say that the second one is aimed towards the one that's closer to Alora, so the one that isn't 
that isn't by the rock. Okay, so this guy. All right, gotcha. Yeah. All right, so um, go ahead and roll damage for it. Okay. Uh, I got nine. Nine points of damage. Very nice. Yeah. So you see as you as you release the Eldritch Blast from your quarterstaff, it, it, it creates a beam of force energy, and then it, it impacts um, him right in the, like, it seems to be, honestly, like, the throat. And you kind of, like, you basically snipe him in the throat. And just as you do so, you can see the woods around like around his neck kind of splinters, and you can see like a, like an impact crater is left as if someone like punched a tree. Um, is now left by your quarter staff and by your eldritch blast. All right, now it is the tree's turn. Oh. So it grows. These guys, these guys are slow as fuck. So they are gonna. These, okay, we'll start with these guys. So he's going to go here and then here. That's all he can do. These guys are going to start moving closer to you guys. Uh, I'm not scared. What was that? It, it would be... Yeah, so I, just, I, had, I had it here. So, yeah. Or he's, yeah, that's as far as he can get. This guy is going to go ahead and go for Alora here. Oh. Um, so that, Laura, he's gonna go ahead and take a slam attack against you. Uh oh, yes, sir. So that he's gonna that is gonna go ahead and be. Let me just roll. That is a ten to hit. That sucked. <laughs> he, he's not rolling. Yeah. So you, you see, yeah, you see out of the um at your peripheral vision, you're able to see. Coming towards um, from your left, you see running up towards you this, this lumbering creature, um, and he goes and does a slam attack with his with his right arm, and you are able to swiftly dodge out of the way as you are able to um, avoid that completely, taking no damage. This one's going to also move to you, Laura. Sorry, and then that's hot. Ooh, this is these are bad rolls. Twelve to hit. Does not hit. All right, yeah. So you, even though they're both ganging up on you, you um you dodge and then they um he does not impact you. All right. So you're able to swiftly dodge out of the way of both of these. Now, which one will piss him off more, Lyris or <laughs> Delilah? Hmm. I didn't do anything. Tough call. Tough call. I just I guess... turned my back on him. He's. I guess he would still be pissed at Lyris or. Yeah, right, you're still pissed at Lyris because nice. you got Lyris yanked his him. branch. Yeah. So Ly <laughs> he's still pissed at Lyris. Sorry, buddy. I wonder um, what part of him I yanked. Uh, oh, 18. That is an 18 to hit. Uh, that, I have 18 armor class, so yeah, hits. All right. So that is going to go ahead and be 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Damn. Fair play. So he goes and he brings down... He takes both arms and kind of locks them in like in like a fist, and he goes and smashes the fist right down on top of you guys, and it impacts Lyris. And Lyris, while you're able to, um, you quickly re react with your shield and pull out your shield and block it. You block the hit. It seems to significantly push you down, and then eventually kind of breaks your gri your grip on the shield as it kind of like pushes you, and you kind of feel like your um your feet are sinking into the mud, and you you take um that much damage as well just from yeah. the impact itself. Um, all right. I think that is all for the trees turn pretty underwhelming, but they are pretty spread out, like I said. So, yeah. oh, also, I just want to know, I said there are eight trees, um, that are not moving, um, before they, um, so these five began moving. The other three have not reacted. If they are monsters at they're, all, they're you cannot, if they, if they are monsters, you can't tell if they aren't, then you're at luck. But yeah. Oh. Um, so. Lyris, you are you. It is your turn, and then Alora, you are up next after him. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I kind of uh, get myself back up after being slammed. Um, I kind of leave my shield by my feet for now. Um, I uh, kind of draw, uh, grab my long sword with two hands, and kind of just proclaim, "Ha! I needed some more firewood," and just. Uh, I just go in for a proper side hit, you know, like a, like a lumberjack would um, against. Okay. Um, and I'm going to... Okay, let me double check if I have to cast this before or after. 
Oh, no, no, I can cast it after, so I'll roll to hit first. So uh, rolling to hit, uh, obviously I can attack, I can use my extra attack, so I'm going to go for two attacks with my long sword gotcha. two hands. So first one, 17, second one, 22. They both hit, go ahead and roll for Lovely. damage for each. Now, um, I will need a clarification uh, on this. I'm going to pop it in the chat for you. Uh, so Divine Smite, I've, been, I've used this before, but I've never used it since I can attack twice. So it says, when you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, you can expend one spell slot to deal radiant damage to the target in addition to the weapon's damage. So my question being is, if I cast that now, does that count for both hits as it's within my one action? Or because I'm actually going whack, whack, would it have to be cast twice? It's, yeah, it's so, one action, but I'm technically hitting so, twice. So yeah, you, you can. So what's cool about Smite is it, the, um, it's pretty OP in the early levels for Paladin because you can hit them and then cast Smite after you've hit them, so you don't waste a spell slot. That's so, right. And then and then you can, if you have a second attack, you can hit them again and then pump Smite into it again. But it, yeah, it would take two spell slots, but you can pump Smite into it after yeah. you hit it. So that's that's a cool thing about it. But okay, so, yeah, so it would require two spells so to be spent. That's fine. So I'm going to yeah, I am gonna cast um uh Divine Smite both times. First okay. time I'm gonna do it at level two. The second time I'm gonna do it at level one. So let's roll for damage. So the first one is okay so yeah, this is more. uh I'm going to roll it separately, by the way, because, um, I, yeah, the, yeah. So this is the actual damage for the first one, which is 10, yeah. but then it's yep. plus, uh, th so I'm do it casting at level three. So that's 3d8. So 3d8. So, so 22 for the first hit. All right. So yeah, you, you go and you, you cart. So you said, where, where would you like to slash on this creature? Right. Like imagine a lumberjack. Uh, okay. So here we go. This is what we do. You know how a lumberjack cuts down a tree. You do one like directly to the side and then you do another at a 45 degree angle to try and take out a chunk. So it would collapse. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. As in, you know, that, okay, that's so the sort of hit. So one, one directly sideways against it, against the main trunk. Um, and the other one at a 45 degree angle down from the first. Hit. Okay. So it is quite tall, um, but you are able, I would say for your with your reach, you're able to kind of like strike at its hip at least, or like its lower hip, yeah. kind of like near its thigh, and you're able to take a large chunk out of it with your divine smite. You, your um your um your sword grows with like radiant energy, and you get a you like your your sword gets a glow with radiant energy as you strike into the creature, you create a large chip in it as if like you like a large axe chop. And then your your smite seems to increase the damage as well. So, and as for your second hit, go ahead and roll for damage and add your smite uh, bonus. So seven, and then smite bonus this time. It will just be two d eight because it's only level uh, one five. So an, an an extra twelve damage. So total thirty four damage. Yeah. Okay. Very good turn. Very good turn. So this creature is looking very, very rough. He is barely hanging on. As you you strike into it again, you can you take a giant chip out of its um like a giant like sliver out of its um out of that same area like right above it. So and he looks like he's about to collapse. He is not looking good. Um, Alora, you are up next. Um, and then Delilah, you're after her. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. DM. I would absolutely love to cast Scorching Rays right now. Ooh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm into it. Um, and you see, like, uh, the, it's like a little pyramid right now. Like, there's like a little, there's two, and then there's one. I'm going to cast a ray on uh, each three. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Gotcha. Hopefully I can at least. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and catch for, cast for each ray. Yes, sir. Where the frick? There it is. Found it. A uh, twenty-five. Yep, that definitely hits for one. A nineteen. Definitely hits. And a nineteen. Ooh, definitely ooh, hits. Nice. All three hit. Can I just say that her disadvantage roll was higher? She had twenty-five, twenty-five, and twenty-six. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. An eleven, a five, and a nine. Okay, so I'm gonna say the eleven will go to this guy the one second so that's the three will five will go to this guy and then the nine will go to this guy so as for this creature you see that virus is hacking as far as this creature you see virus the center one virus is hacking into it 
and you thought in order to give him assist, you want your first um, ray of fire. Just like it, it seems to glow in your hands, and as you release it, it splits into three bolts as, as you're used to, and it arcs right around Delilah's head, going right past her ear and striking directly in the center of the creature, and it creates a huge fire that is that is viewable from miles and miles away as as the creature it just ignites into a full flame and then just falls over and collapses onto the ground um and with and his head is dunked underwater so that's the only part of him that is not burning <laughs> let's fucking go <laughs> as for um this guy he is going ahead and take uh, he's gonna that once again your fire attacks really hit deep with these guys um doing a significant amount of damage as, as it hits his it seems to hit his thigh as it kind of just arcs around and hits directly right next to him um and this it singes his leg and kind of starts to create like a mini fire which he has to try and pat out with with his hands that are also wood and the um the last bolt goes and hits the other guy in the thigh and it, it does an, a, another 18 points of fire damage to this guy um, nice. and the each of these guys start to ignite and Creatures are falling here, y'all. Creatures are falling. So I'm gonna go mm -hmm. ahead and take this guy off the field, but just know that that guy's basically falling over and drowning in the water if he could. Okay. Um, otherwise, um, is that gonna be in your turn, Laura? It is indeed. Okay, Delilah, it is your turn. Okay. Um. So I would like, if I may, to cast shatter um and this is the spell that i did before where it's um i mean i'll put it in the chat um okay. but uh i cast it onto a uh, a spot within 60 feet away from me but was able to have it so that lyris didn't get hurt by it but it hurt the what, yes yes the, yes the I, I remember now mm -hmm. yeah so I would like to be able to do that with the two trees that are by Alora, but not have her hit by that, if that's possible. I know that okay, she's right so, in between them, though. So it is a 10-foot uh, sphere. So that's going to be this. Uh -huh. um, and you're going to cast it here. That's, like, right out of Alora's range. Like, that would just barely not hit her. Yeah. You want to get these two? Yes, please. That's okay. epic. So, gotcha. All right. So, as you go ahead and cast it, you you cast this like sort of. It's unlike your. This spell is one of the most unlike the ones that you have. As it when you cast it toward backwards towards these guys, it it creates like an outward like blast, and it's kind of like large sound waves. And you can see that although nothing comes out of your hands directly, you can see like a dome, a sphere of sound is basically created, and it's oh, just this loud cool. ringing noise. And as and usually you would expect, like, just for normal humans, just, like, screaming and stuff like that. For these creatures, not only do they put, like, their hands towards their, like, their ears and start shrieking, but they also, you can see the it's so high-pitched that the wood on them starts to kind of crack and, and brittle away a little bit as well. That's cool. Um, each of the, for each of these guys, um, you, so you cast, since you're a warlock, you're going to cast this at the highest level you can, which is three. Yes, that was so, ideal, so I think it's 48. So yeah, you thunder cast. Damage. So yeah, forty-eight thunder damage, and then they uh -huh. have to save it. Uh, is this three? Oh, did you cast it higher? Three D eight. I've cast it uh, level three. Cast it Understandable. Yeah. Um. So and so, then these guys have to make a spell DC of fourteen, and then Constitution saving a Constitution throw. saving throw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me just one second. I will be right on that. So that is going to go ahead and be a. Hey Ria, in the um like uh, in future fights, um if. Uh, Delilah kind of preemptively lets uh, me know if you are going to cast that. I'm pretty certain mm. I've got a spell that. Oh no! Ignore me. I'm being stupid. It's only, only a, it's only a buff. I, I thought I have a, I have a buff spell that I thought could also be used negatively to make it so that they have disadvantage on their saving throws, which would have been uh -huh. perfect for this. But no, it turns out it's the opposite. It's it's only for positive ones. So. I will uh, just yeah, actually. Him. I think I have a spell that does that anyway. Ah, fair. Okay. I think so. W the left guy here saves uh -huh. with a fifteen. Okay. Um, the other guy rolled rolled a seven total. Okay. So, so the guy on the left will take half damage. Yep. Um. So it is four d eight. Okay. So Are you gonna roll it separately? 
and I am because when I roll things together, I always get <laughs> shit rolls. So I'm going right. to roll them separately. By all means. Fuck. Three. <laughs> one. Six. Six. Okay, that's slightly okay. redeemed. Net positive, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's a total of 16. 16 points of damage. Yeah. So, yeah. So for the, um, so 16 for right one and eight for another. Takes eight points of damage. All right. So, and then. This guy takes the brunt of the, the force. And you can see as the guy on the, the right, to the right, well, I mean, to the left of Delilah when she's facing him, but on for people on camera, to this right one over here. As, as she releases this, this fear of sound, it shatters their bark, and the, the, the one on the right even kind of falls to its knees and kind of like, it's just, uh, just like, just basically leans over and just kind of, like is 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 just shrieking in pain at this at the noise of this sound, but while this creature is able to remain standing, so in fact, um, he's but he that is not going to go and knock him prone. That was just for flavor. Um, cool. Is that going to be near your turn, Delilah? You still have movement, I believe, and you're not, you're no longer um. Yeah, you're no longer. You can get out of here without without an attack of opportunity. Um, I am going to. I'm not going to move. Um, because I know that the, there's still that one guy who's laying down um, with his head in the water, and I think he's still on fire. So, um, but I am going to. Oh, he's dead, by the given way. Given that, is he is he completely dead? Yeah, oh, he's yeah, been he's, 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 what, he's, he's still he's still burning right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm going to stay on this side of them because I'd like to, I'm basically just going to turn my attention to the other two on the other side, thinking that they can't really get to us because there's a great big burning tree right in their way. And if they try and get to us the easy way, they're just going to catch themselves Trip over their anyway. friends. <laughs> yeah. Trip over their dead friend if he's on fire okay. and then catch fire themselves. So, all right. So then it's the tree, it are, is the tree's turn. So this guy is going to notice how much you hurt him <laughs> and is going to move in between Alora. Not oh, enough. Oh, actually. Yeah, he's not that. I mean, let me look at his intelligence. Uh, he's kind of intelligent. He's um, big, dumb, dumb. <laughs> um, yeah, he's going he's gonna to move out of Alora's at, attack range. So, or you can get an attack of opportunity on him. If you would like to take it, um, yeah, you, um, this guy moved out of your range, so you can take an attack up opportunity on him. So if you want to go and oh yeah, there. sure, why not? Uh, how do I do that? <laughs> so the, if you want to hit with your staff, go ahead yeah. and um, I have to go and pull up the staff real quick. <laughs> Basically, you can do. I, oh, I, I DM'd it to you. Do you still have that? I, I think I, it was in Discord DMs. If you want. <laughs> If you want to, you can you can get back to me in just a second. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. I'll go ahead and say. I'll go ahead and choreograph his attack for Delilah first, and then yeah. go ahead and look for that when you hit it, when you hit it. Okay. Um, so he is gonna go ahead and go ahead and make a slam attack against Delilah as well. Delilah, that is gonna go ahead and be a. Keep in mind, I'm gonna use my fighting style protection. Uh, so which means he'll. Um, I'm just gonna put that in chat for a reminder. Um. It'll be a disadvantage on the attack roll. Okay, so no, that's good because he he got an eighteen. So let's see what he gets now. Twenty-two. Uh, seventeen. Okay. Yeah, it still hits. All I right. tried. So you rolled an eighteen Millie. and seventeen. You got Millie. Yeah. So go ahead and roll the hit for me. Just go ahead and roll. I would like to make a flaming strike because apparently I can't read and I thought I could only do one and two handed attacks, but turns out there's a flaming strike. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fucking do that because that sounds kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I believe that was a three d six. Well, go ahead and roll to hit first, and then if you hit them, then you can roll three d six. So go ahead and roll. Um, I believe it's your uh, d twenty. Oh, uh, that's if you hit. So go ahead and roll a d twenty <laughs> plus your strength mod plus your proficiency mod. What the hell does one do that? I'm so confused. Uh, roll, roll a d twenty. Add three. Ah, D20. All right, so it's 15. And then does the, does the staff give you any bonuses, does it say? On your, um, when I DM to you? Uh, does, attack 
twenty plus provision, uh, strength bonus plus two. Yeah, so that's so you get a plus two as well. So you're at fifteen, so that's seventeen. I mean, I could just say you hit because <laughs> you do. Yay! And, so, <laughs> and he'll go ahead and take eleven points of fire damage as well. It's nice. So, um, <clears throat> that hurt a lot for that guy. So you go ahead and you see as Alora, as the creature sort of lumbers out of his way and sort of strides over to Delilah. Um, in, in response, Alora quickly um, draws out her staff and you can see as she kind of focuses for just a moment, thinking, um, closing her eyes and just kind of giving a focus for just a, one second. And the, the um, both ends of the staff light on fire and she does a quick spin and strikes the creature right in, in the back, like where the calf would be. And you can Slap. see as she as she strikes it, it creates a large impact crater um, where she hits, as along with um, a shit ton of fire appearing in that place as well. <laughs> I love fire. Can <laughs> oh. Lyra at this um, point be looking slightly concerned at the pyromaniac that we've called family? <laughs> <laughs> he's looking really, really, really rough at this point, but he's going to go at he he did hit. Um, do I he did hit seventeen? And an yeah. 18, he rolled for both. Um, but that's going to go ahead and be a... Um, 15 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. As he goes in and does a one-arm strike against you, he does, it goes and slams down on you, and it causes the impact. Um, he strikes you right and, and basically just throws you against... <coughs> um, Hits you basically go. He hits you so hard you almost fly like into Iris almost, and he can um, you almost knock him off balance. But um, I am going to cast hellish rebuke ooh, as my okay. reaction. So go let's go ahead and then. It's been a while post. since I've cast this. Yeah. Um, so what's nice about this one is that it's fire damage. Oh, oh yeah, and it, it takes two d ten fire damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. But I'm casting this at a level three sod, which means that I get another two d ten. So I will be doing four d ten if I'm successful. I mean, can I? Okay, and I, potentially... think, I think that's also that's also both your spell slots gone as well as well. Yes, but... it is. I was going to say, Ria, is it is it potentially worth casting at our lower spell level just because we do know he's relatively low health is it worth she can't i don't have any other spell slot oh yeah, okay she, i've only got she those, only yeah. has like two she only has two level three spell slots yeah i think yeah that's what i mean so, so you can't cast that as a level you can't no. can you not cast that as a level two no yeah, either she did either she casts level uh hellish rebuke at a, at a um third level spell or she doesn't at all okay yeah. no worries i will shush all right, so yeah, I mean, um, I was thinking about saving it for the other two, but like, I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to get attacked by the other two. Yeah, so. no, true, true. And this so will dex, definitely... that's a dex check. So that which I don't think, yeah, they are not very dexterous at all. So yeah, it's a spell save fifteen for this. That's one. a nine. Yeah, so that's a fail. So for, roll four d ten. He takes all damage you roll. <laughs> five, two, five, one. I mean, right. even with low rolls, even still 13 fire damage for a it reaction. Is fire damage, 13 points fire so damage. It, it you see, get... as, this, as, Re or, yeah, as Delilah gets smacked into basically into Lyris, she kind of like regains um, her footing. And quickly after, you see um, very, very quickly, um, Lyris, you notice as she stands back up and then she, she whispers, um, or not even whispers, she shouts um, words that are completely unknown to you. And you can see on the creature, after, like, on the arm that he struck Delilah with, you can see just ignites into flames, and his whole arm catches on fire. And it, but it slowly spreads throughout his entire body, and he could basically, he's just screeching, as, as, and he's just running around. But then he kind of just, eventually just collapses on the ground, on, still on fire, but he's no longer on the battlefield. Okay. Woo! Right. Let's go. One less. Um... What well done? Yeah. Did you take the damage, okay. Rhea? Yes, I did. So whose turn? Oh, it was the tree people's turn. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. you, the top two need to move now, I think. Now this. Oh, this no, that guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. Sure. This, guy need, this guy's going to make an attack against um, Alora. Still going to make another slam attack for killing his friend and hurting him <laughs> in the process. Um, that is a 21 to hit. Or, Oof. Ooh, not a tw uh, 23. That definitely hits, and not even my uh, reaction spell could do anything about that one. <laughs> okay, so that's going to go ahead and be... 
um, five points of damage. Fourteen points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> he so he goes and he he um this he goes and honestly he goes and like raises both arms and goes in for basically to like basically slap you between both hands as like as if you're caught in the middle between a clap and you're so focused on like how you took down the other guy you don't even notice and you get he strikes you from both sides and you get struck um on both sides of you and you take yeah you take all that damage um otherwise um these guys are okay they're gonna he gets there i think That's far they can get. Um, all right, so these guys, who would these guys not like? Honestly, I don't think. I, I'm sorry to keep getting on you, Delilah, but you, you're just slaughtering these guys. Um, um, Aurora too, but they can't even get there. They can't get to her. Um, this guy is going to go and use his action to dash to try and get get to Lyris. so he gets another twenty feet. Fine. 15, 20, and he does. Um, this guy is going to go ahead and go and do slam attacks on the both of yous. And the nice. both of us. Oh wait, is it like a, is it like an AOE attack? So when they attack, it will attack both. No, of no, us? There, there's two, there's two guys that are just individually striking yeah. both of you. Oh, okay, so one um, each. One each. Yep. All right. So for nice the first guy, for the first, let's go ahead and do liars first. Um, give give Delilah a few seconds. Yeah. Um, to rest. <laughs> um. Lyris, for you, that slam attack is going to be a thirteen to hit. Yeah, yeah. So he goes and he he go and you see this guy and Lyris, you, you've been watching this guy from like the distance and like seeing him basically go and um like run around in the distance. But then he does like a dash movement and he just starts. He goes and then you like you're thinking he won't get in the water and then he basically just goes and steps and, and walks and runs. Basically like runs through the water. Ooh, actually, he couldn't even hit you in the first place because he used he used a a a, um, a dash action, so he couldn't even get to you. So even if it did hit you, it didn't. That wouldn't have done anything. So never mind. He just got to you, Lyris. That's it. Nice. So you never you didn't have to worry about it in the first place. That's fine. Lucky fuck. Sorry, Delilah. Your turn. <laughs> uh, twenty-two. To get. Uh, I'm gonna roll. Obviously, again, my fighting <laughs> yeah, style protection. Uh, yes, no, no. Okay. If I, so the disadvantage. All right, rolling again. Oh my god, Ria. That is much better. That's an, that's an 11. So he get that's, I mean, it's better, better for you guys. Oh my god, yeah. That doesn't hit. So 11 to hit. So yeah, Lyris, um, um, Delilah, you see as this guy goes for like an up, like a, just, they keep raising their arms and going for, to basically squash you guys into the earth. Um, they are, um, go down and, and they hit you guys, but this time Lyris and picks up his shield that was basically, he dropped onto the ground and it, and instead of like, and instead of using it for himself, he goes and runs. He kind of like d- does like a quick jump, and like it's like midair, basically just hits it and blocks it, and meets it with meets it with equal force, and he does no damage to Delilah. And basically stands in front of him and just blocks it. <gasps> <My hero. laughs> I turn. I just. I just turn around <laughs> with the smolder. <laughs> <laughs> the smolder. <laughs> the smolder. We all know the smolder. Um, <laughs> Lyris, it's your turn. Um, Awar, you're up next after him. Lovely. So, uh, obviously, just after parrying that attack uh, from the one that's kind of like directly in between me and uh, Delilah, uh, I will. Uh, so, as I kind of turn around with the smolder, uh, I hand my shield temporarily to uh, to Delilah, uh, whilst I pull out my. I drop uh, it. <laughs> just like, just like yeah, you try to grab it, like Thor's hammer, go doink to the floor. It's just too, it's too heavy. I proper like, I'm just like, Whoa! and it kind of pulls me over a little bit. Um, catch it, just gives her a hernia or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I kind of, as I'm turning back, I'm drawing out my long sword again and go, don't worry, this one won't get, this one won't get another chance to do that. Uh, and again, I'm just going to go for a kind of a. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and I like I like to do this quite a lot of Lyris. As I'm drawing my sword, I'm lifting up and going for kind of like a 45, de- 45 degree angle, kind of like southwest to northeast sort of thing, you know, if that makes sense. You know, like bottom left to top right, uh, going for okay. a slash. Um, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. So I'm going to be uh, using, my, obviously, my extra attack, because why wouldn't I do that? I can do that every time. Uh, I'm going to go for two attacks. Uh, the first, uh, well, actually, let's see if I hit first before I say... Yeah, and this is going to be this for the right guy, right? That's correct. The one that I tried to hit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the one that I've just blocked from, because that's the whole point. I've blocked the attack, 
given my shield to Delilah, and then gone for a swing. All right, um, go ahead. So two hits. Oh, nine and 13. Not as good as last time. Second one hits. The first one does not. The second okay. one hits just barely. Well, the second one I will cast uh, again, my, my last level two slot, uh, Divine Smite again. So right. regular damage, 14. Okay. Uh, and okay. then 3d8. Of which I get, I'm going to do. I'm going to do rear. I'm going to roll three separately. D8, mm -hmm. four, D8, three, and a seven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. I, for, for those watching the podcast, I did genuinely roll a seven before shouting. Yeah. All right. So wow. Yeah, that's a decent amount of damage. So, so that's you go. A, yeah. That's these, twenty twenty eight. These unfazed creatures. This these um on these on this end they're unfazed, and you go and you slash um and you go from the um bottom left to top right slash and you go and do that and you succeed and you take a large chunk out of this time out of its thigh and um and then you go and you wind up again and you hit so and then you hit it this this first time um and you pump a smite into it and so the yeah the first one kind of like you go and swing and he's able to he uses his his arm swings in, in your direction and instead like deflects it and doesn't really seem to get much beneath his armor the second hit goes and while well, his you move, like you basically dodge like um like underneath his arm and then do an upward slash and this time your um your sword goes with the smite energy the divine energy that it has and it cleaves into the creature and it shrieks as you took a hearty chunk out of its health and its body. Very nice. Is that going to be the end of turn? Uh, I... well, let me have a quick look at where I am. Ah, I just accidentally minimized Discord. Uh. Can I? No, no. Actually, no. I, I, Delilah needs my help more. That's fine. I will stay exactly where I am. Except, obviously, to to finish my turn. You know, after doing my slash, uh, noticing that Delilah struggled with the shield, I, I pick my shield back up. <laughs> All right, easy enough. Uh, Laura, um, it is your turn. Delilah, you're up next. Okay, I was doing some reading while you guys were fighting. Um, I was Harry thinking... Potter. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, fireball seems kind of cool, but I think I'm gonna stick because there's only three left. I'm gonna do scorching ray again, um, okay. because I think it's more efficient than because if I cast fireball, I can hit two of them because it kind of creates like a sphere. Mm -hmm. But I think hitting three of them, hopefully, yeah, yeah. especially how open your damage is. Fingers crossed. I, I think what you could, yeah. Also, if you, if one thing you could do is if you have, do you have the um, the sorcery ability? I don't forget what the specific name of in, in the play, handbook, but do you have like the the careful um, spell casting? Do you have that? I have. Oh God, there's. It's like it, I have it, so it, much shit. I think it's like <laughs> it's on, it's on the core page and it's like on the bottom right. It's like yeah. Just... Um, I've got flexible person. I've got empowered spell. Yeah, so you can do like extra damage, I think, if you... Yeah, if you when you spell. roll damage for a spell, you can spend one sorcery points to re-roll a number of damage dice up to your charisma modifier. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, you must use the new rolls. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so okay. if you want to so see, you can do, like, a lot more damage that way. I have, like, six sorcery points. Could I do that for each one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck it, I'll do that then. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I think. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you can. I mean, uh, for. I can just roll. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, hopefully, I yeah. actually hit. <laughs> I, I think. For, I think you can. I mean. Twelve. All right. That 24. does not hit. Hits. And twenty-four. Uh, hits. So, we'll say you cast this one misses. This one and these two it hits. All right. So for the ones it hits, go ahead and use your sorcery point. You can take off two sorcery points to empower your spells. Okay, how do I? I'm so, I've never done this before, so I'm like, how your the so, hell do your I? Your sorcery use? points are in your in your yeah, core. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. It's just the how do I add the? Th go ahead and roll the damage. Like, what kind of damage dice does your thing use? It doesn't. Um, scorching ray. I think it. Um, um, you'll see, uh, to the, see where you see your Scorching Ray, is your Scorching Ray in the middle of your screen, buddy? It's a D 2d6. There, go ahead and look D6. at that. So it's, it's a, it's 2d6. So, mm. 
by add, um, adding an empowering spell, I think you it's three d six instead because you add an extra dice. So you can right? just you can yes, yeah, so you can just roll an extra one d six for each of those. Yes. He was about my charisma modifier. Uh, um, your charisma modifier is the yeah is a small number next to your. Uh, uh, reroll a number of the damage dice up to your charisma modifier. So what's so you the can small number? the dice up to. So I can re-roll it if it's like not as high as I want it to be. Okay, so go that ahead. I mean, so yeah, I'm go, gonna okay. yeah, go and roll the hit in the first. So you so you got um you rolled seven seven and ten. Do you want to get try and get higher than that? But wait, does, 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 wait, does, does she have to roll a extra one d six first before she decides to re-roll? Yeah. The empower. Okay, I'm I'm gonna get um yeah, empowered. This is confusing. I'm sorry. Right, no, so I mean, you source source was confusing. Uh, one second. So I'm, the, I'm looking at your character yeah. sheet real quick. Um, when you roll damage free, so you spend one sorcery point to re-roll a number of damage dice. Okay, so if you, so let's say you've got like a, like double ones, you could spend two sorcery points to re-roll the damage. And it's saying what it's saying is your you. So if if your charisma mod, modifier is four, you can change up to the four damage points. So you can like change up to four of those dice stand, rolls. Right. And Wait, that, what is my charisma? That's what it's saying. With it's one the small number on the left sorcery. side of your character sheet. Yeah, it says so charisma, one, then a big number, actually, then a small no, it, number. So yeah, it's actually only you only have to spend one sorcery point, and if it's and, and since it's like the fire beam attack, it, that can cover. If you had four beams, it would cover four. So but, one sorcery point, and and you can reroll that. So if your numbers are shit, you can reroll it basically. But keep in mind that you had you've rolled two two d sixes, so obviously the maximum is twelve, and you've rolled a seven and a ten. So both of them are above half. I would actually say don't even worry about reroll if I was you. Yeah, so don't you don't have to worry about it. So, that, but for next time, minutes. if you roll, if you roll a, if you roll any damage of any of your spells, and you're ever like, oh, that was shit damage, consider it's next like time. Less than five, I would say maybe think about re-rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, in, yeah, in the future. I have so much other stuff to look at. Oh my fucking god. Oh, does, that, oh. that make sense? does that make sense, Millie? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. So, but for these guys, easy enough. Um, all right, so oh, I, can we're do, I can add more damage. What the fuck is this? Ah. So, starting at sixth level, I'm when you cast a spell level. that deals damage of the type associated with your draconic sensory, so fire, add your charisma fire. modifier to that damage. Uh, at the same time, you can spend one source point to gain resistance. So, basically, you uh, f now that you're sixth level, ev I mean, we should have been doing this for the last few attacks. Every time you do fire damage, you can add your charisma modifier to the damage. So what is your charisma modifier, Bunny? You haven't actually said it out loud damn. yet. Damn. Ooh, that's nasty. Five. So charisma modifier is five. So basically you can do five extra damage to every... So that's basically 12 and 15. And that should I'll, have added... I'll go, I'll go a bit behind the scenes since this is a battle. So because... So that let's... You rolled, you rolled seven damage. So because he's re, he's weak to fire, that's... So that's double. So that's, that's um, 14. Plus your charisma modifier because it's your elemental affinity because you like using fire. And that's so it's 19 points of damage on, on a seven. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> so you fucked him up. Um 19 points of damage. All right. And then And the other one would be 25. This 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 guy. No, this guy's taken damage before once. Uh, I'm not I'm not thinking. Yeah, the one closest to Laura has taken damage from Alora previously. Uh if I recall it was a uh, roughly in the twenties again. It was another scorching ray that she used. We can yeah, scroll up. I can scroll up and see. Fucked up with my staff. So for so for no. This, okay, so for, that, was that was the one that walked away from you. You didn't hit this guy. This guy is no. Right, the, that guy is. The, so just to be clear, the two that are by me, the one that dashed to me, no one's hit at all. Yeah, this one. Uh, the one that's closest to Delilah, uh, I'm the only one that's hit so far because these are the two Jeez. that came from. The, these are the two that came from the north, and so far the only engagement is they attacked Delilah and I attacked them back. Um. And the one that's closest to Alora has had uh, one hit previously by Alora from a, 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 a fire uh, scorching ray. I know that Rhea's hit that one with half of that damage from earlier. I think, what did you roll earlier, Rhea? Rhea 15? Yeah. No, you rolled a 16. So eight damage was done by. So yeah. Rhea's done eight damage to him. And Alora's done whichever was her previous firebolt, which looking back at Bunny's rolls last time. She did a 
And just to be, just to be clear, Mill, your your draconic bloodline is fire, right? That's that's your that's your. Yeah, that's, that's why I've got mainly fire spells. Just I want I just want to let you know, Millie, you you did forty four damage in one turn. That's ins- oh yes, yeah, it's, it's like everything is positive for her in this right. fight. This is all like right, right, yeah. yeah, this is literally this is the, like she's tailored. in her element here. Literally, yeah. she's in her element. This is like but... taking six fire Pokemon into the grass gym. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry to bog down the podcast. Like, sorry, sorry to bog bog down that with on the podcast. No, no, but... it's 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 good to, it's good to know for those for like you know a lot of people that watch our podcast are learning themselves. Um, we are also learning. You know, let's let's remember that. Like, I know it's been quite a few episodes into D and D, but you know, we said at the very start of this campaign that uh, myself, Bunning, and Rhea are still actually very new to D and D. So these sort of things are really good to learn. So thank you, Jevons. Yep. Yep. All right. So Millie, that is your your one hell of a turn. If you want to do anything else, but. Uh, you still oh, have bonus action I, and movement. Um, I think I'm okay. I'm still trying to process the fact that I'm fucking cracked. <laughs> so you, right. you need to remember now, Millie, that every single time you make an attack that involves fire, which, you know, is either your fireball, scorching ray, or fireball, quite a lot of them, you always need to add plus five to your damage. All right. Um, Delilah, so <laughs> it is your turn, and then the trees just turn after that. So go ahead. It is your turn. You're up next. Um, um, this guy is undamaged. This guy is looking pretty rough. This guy is looking super, super rough. Okay. Um, I have no spell slots, so it is all cantrips from here on out. Eldritch Blast! Um, Warlocks, Warlocks, Warlocks. <laughs> uh, I'm impressed with digitation. It isn't really going to do anything for me. Even though I can light things on fire, I don't know how much damage it actually does. Um, I've got. Uh, I could do. Uh, I could do shocking grass, maybe. Uh, well, no, I'm just gonna stick with Eldritch Blast, to be honest. Okay. It's a tried and true method. So I am going to. Um, I forget, do I get disadvantage if it's right next um, to me? I don't think yeah. we've been adding disadvantage, or, but do I do I think, it now? No, we haven't, we've, we've said no. Uh, we've said in the past no. Okay. Uh, so, then, yeah, I'm I'll going to, to cool. I'm going to blast the bitch right next to me that, um, Lyris just protected me from. Okay. So go ahead and roll to hit. No disadvantage. Oh, uh, I forgot that I've got two rays, so actually I'm going to hit both of them, if I can. One ray yep. for each. So go ahead and, ca- go ahead and go it twice. Mm, got a seven. Which and is I a 14, 14 and a 21. Oh, they yeah. both hit. Roll for damage. Nice. Four. <laughs> okay. And more damage um, for the second well, one. Well, it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's two for each. I got, I got two twos. Ah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you... So you blast it, you blast it twice, and it, it, it knocks him back a little bit, but it does not seem to make a huge impact on him. Um, but it does chip, it seems to chip the surface little bark that he has. Um, I ain't doing shit. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah. You're just taking All a right. break, giving him a chance. All right. So time I've been for taking the... a break for the past ten episodes. <laughs> I haven't done shit. It's time for the trees' turn. So they are going to. This one is really, really mad at Elora. All these guys are pretty mad at Alora, honestly. <laughs> um, they, have, they have a higher intelligence. Uh, this guy, he would know. This guy is unaffected. He's this guy. Okay, we'll start with this guy. This guy's gonna know. This guy knows what he wants. He's gonna hit Lyris. Cool. Ooh, that's a two plus six is eight. That's not good. No. Nope. No, that's eight total. Uh, yeah, so he slam and miss Lyris e- easily with your military training, able to dodge out of that. Can I? Can I? Like, it's so low. Can I just be like, "Oh, you, you tried to hit me. Didn't even see you there." <laughs> oh yeah, Make it, he, even though it's a tree man, you can sense the anger. Um, this guy is going to go for Lyris again. I think. Um. Wow. Shit rolls tonight. Thirteen. Miss Rooney. Yes, Delilah, you're just dodging out of the way, and you're blocking. You're blocking hits that Delilah would I'm, be taking. You're you're dodging around, not getting hit yourself. You I'm now in nimble. tune with nature. Yeah, you are. While wearing all this heavy armor, you are nimble as anything, my friend. All right. Nice. And finally, Awara, your turn. 
uh, to get hit. <laughs> this is where they get like 17. A oh, yeah. Um, I would like to cast a reaction thingy. Okay. It's called Shield. Excellent. Okay. And so it adds uh, five uh, bonus to my AC, my armor class. Bringing it up to. Bring it up to 20. Oh yeah. So yeah, he, nice. he goes and he he goes for a slam attack, but you see as you wave your hand up in like a like up in like a vertical motion like that, kind of like going up and going up in the air, and you can see as he goes to strike, but it hits like this sort of arcane barrier for a moment that that's that appears for like a moment in time, and you can see that war's magic is is blocking him um, significantly. Can I giggle? <laughs> oh, you, oh, you very much can. You're just making these guys more and more angry, but. Um, that's the end of their turn. They did jack shit. They didn't hit a single thing. I don't know what I'm paying you guys for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Lyra, it's your turn, and then Laura, you're up next. Lovely. Um, so considering the one closest to Delilah is... I, I have a good feeling that Delilah and Laura can handle that one that's already taken 28 damage from me and 4 from Rhea. Um... I'm going to turn my attention to the one that no one has hit yet. You have to point out how little damage I did. I'm every if little you helps. You have to say the name, the number. Lyris is actually like verbally it. counting them. Yeah, Lyris is literally counting the maps out loud. Um, so I turn to the one that no one's attacked yet, um, that kind of missed me. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I'm slowly running out of spell slots myself, but I'm going to go for a double two-handed longsword attack on him. Okay, go ahead. Nat 20. Ooh. Okay. So which is 27 yeah. and a 13. Yeah. They both hit. Roll and for I am going to... Okay, maybe this is overkill, considering I've got a Nat. I am going to cast Divine Smite at level 1 twice. I now have just one spell slot remaining. Um, okay, so what, what are these... How are you spreading these attacks? Are you going to do with one against this guy or one against this guy? Which, which guy are you trying to hit or what? Uh, What's up? What combo do you want? Okay, so... Just feel free to say no. But can I make the decision based off of my first hit of damage? As in, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the, the nat twenty hit first on the one that hasn't had any damage, and basically based, you know, after I've hit that, and I go for the second swing. If the first tree has fallen, then I'm likely gonna go for the second one. If that makes sense. Um, you can say no if that's. I would, yeah, I would say no in this instance because that's I would fine. say just go ahead and go ahead and call which it case, beforehand what, double, what you want to do. Double hit, uh, same technique that I used on the very first one, where I'm going uh, for a side hit and then a 45 degree angle hit, as if I'm trying to basically topple him over to the one that's taken no damage so far, so the one directly north of me. All right, so go ahead and roll um, for damage for, for that nat twenty. So what you're going to go ahead and do, um, the amount of dice it says you have to roll, go ahead and double it, but then you and then the modifiers stay the same. So if it's like two d four, yeah, so it's one d ten plus four, so it's two d ten plus four. So I'm just going to yes. roll this. I'm just going to roll this separately. So two d ten is that. So plus four. So I'm just going to write this down. Would be now twelve. But then yep. I have also got my two d eights for divine smite. Uh, so that's going to be bam, another six. So the first hit is 14 damage. 18. 18 damage? Right. 18. Oh, sorry. It's, I'm being stupid. It's, it's, yeah, because I forgot about the 12. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, 18 damage. 18 damage. Gotcha. All right. So 18 points of damage. Uh... Okay. And then the second hit, um, damage is 12, plus again 2d8. I'm going to roll these separate this time, because that's apparently better. 6 and 3, so a total of uh, 21 damage. So grand total for this one is 21 plus 18, uh, so 39 damage okay. in yeah. one hit, uh, in, in two hits. Yeah, very nice. Uh, that hurt a lot. So he, you, your slash is cut deep on each of these as, as you're um you're honestly at this point your sword is pretty much just continuous radiant energies you strike into these creatures one and as into another while dodging pretty much all their hits you are just like a ballerina with swords on the battlefield here um, and doing significant damage chopping into each of these um creatures um is that gonna be the end of turn Lyris? uh yeah there is a uh, very little actually no no i haven't got any action so no i'm good thank you 
Okay, so that will go ahead and be Aurora. It's your turn, and then I'll, Delilah, you're up next. Cool. Okay, so I have one more level two slot left, but I also have a fuck ton of sorcery points. So if I wanted to keep using Scorching Ray, I can. But it would make sense again for me to cast Scorching Ray, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be gonna be using this again. <laughs> yeah, okay, what level what level spell would it um is Scorching Ray again? Two. Two. Okay, so I think it's I think it's two sorcery points to use, right? I mean, but she hasn't got to do it now because she still has one more spell slot. Is what she's saying? Oh yeah, she's yes, she's yes, just yes. saying that she can like she's just predicting the future. She can. All right, go ahead. Yes, then don't worry about it. All right, keep going. So, where are you um aiming to hit? By the way, but are you going all uh, for one? All so one at each. Okay. All right, they've so far both hit. Twenty-five. Uh, everything hits. So go ahead and. Roll damage for each. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is the 18, this is the 14, this is the 25, and they're gonna go in order. So, um, so go ahead and roll for damage, and then add and five. So. Yeah. And remember, if any of them are shit rolls, if you want to, you can use that power that we said before to re-roll and sp uh, spend. So, so if any of them are shit. So that's 14. 11. 11. What the fuck did I just... I oh, oh, it's... It, you got the, the plus nine is if you'd have taken the nat 20 from the disadvantage, but you're not, so ignore that nine. It's an eight, so 13. I rolled six. I don't like the six. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then... I don't like the yeah. six. So well, that, that was devastating. So these guys... Boop, boop. <laughs> oh, Ignite. Okay. Okay, then it, never mind. <laughs> it, these guys ignite and then just fall over on fire as Alora is single handedly the building fire against no firemen in this giant forest fire that should be considered a gender reveal party. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, that is that going to be in your turn, Alora? No. Okay, Delilah, your turn. Finish and, him uh, off. This, this last guy looking uh, pretty rough. Finish him. Um. God. Uh. Either I can do an Eldritch Blast, or I can try Poison Spray on him. Okay. And then I'm a bit like, oh, because he has to succeed on a Constitution saving throw. Yeah. Which is. How much damage yeah. would? But your but the thing is this: with your Eldritch Blast, two. D12. So one d twelve again, but two of your because your Eldritch Blast is twice. That's a potentially a maximum of twenty. So you probably yeah. got more damage from that anyway. Yeah, I'll do that then. I'll just cast Eldritch Blast twice at him, okay. and see Pew -pew. what happens. I got a fourteen, and I got twelve. First one hits. Second one does not. Fuck. Oh, it's plus seven. That's remember, cool. so nineteen. Oh yes, they both. Oh hit. yeah, they both. Hit. I keep forgetting that. Okay, um, I got two and I got one. Oh for fuck's sake, that's that's <laughs> unlucky. Um, well, it looks like we're back to episode one where <laughs> I can't hit shit. All right, so you and you you go and and both um both impacts make contact. However, it goes and they, it hit while Lyris is, is um, jumping around and, and um, do basically dueling these guys. You impact his hand as he's going in for like a, a, a slam attack for Lyris. So you do damage to him, and you can see his hand is splintered more. But it doesn't it doesn't seem to affect him enough that too it would it would destroy him. Great. Um, and that leaves the tree's turn for his final piece of revenge and probably his final move in this turn. Just just saying. Come at me, bro. Um, all right, for Lyris, one shot. Let's see. That's a two! What is eight? <laughs> what is up? Okay, Lyris, <laughs> do dodge once more to the side. You are just graceful at this point. Um, dodge to the side, and that's the end of his turn. <laughs> the tree see, p see people are simple people. They smash, and then they have nothing to do. Hmm. Um, uh, Lyris, it is your turn. All right, you know what? I have... Actually, no, this one, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, gonna go for... Um... I'm kind of, I'm almost laughing at this point. Like, you know, uh, obviously uh, in a normal situation, Lyris, you know, um, when it comes to like human life would, would be more forgiving. But um, considering this is basically like just 
lumber work. Lyris is loving this sort of opportunity just to smack, smack, smack with his sword. Uh, so laughing away, I go for another double hit. Okay, go ahead. All the hit for both. 24 and 2014? Hit, hit. All right, and, go ahead. Roll damage for both. Yeah, I'm not going to cast Divine but I'm just going to go 8 and 5, so 13. Both hit, and, and you can see as, as you carve into it. How would you like to finish this guy off, Charlie? One second. Windows, I was getting some mozzies in. Uh, so I would like to... Uh, so considering that I already took a considerable chunk out of his left-hand side, so I'm going to describe this as accurate as I can. So if you imagine a tree, I've already taken out a kind of a 45-degree chunk out of his left side. I'm pretty certain that the way the lumberjacks do it is you then do a equal cut on the other side. So again, the, these two hits will have been bam, bam to the other side, now making essentially a pivot point. And I want him to then basically just slowly fall uh, as the middle bit snaps and yeah. just fall to the ground. That's what I want. Yeah. So, so you, at, at the, like the pivot points, it just crushes under his weight and he goes and he goes and falls with a huge splash into what is this pretty shallow pond. Um, but you know, all the water that was basically in this divot is now displaced as this huge um, creature falls into it. Can I stand? No more. Can I stand a uh, stand atop the stump? You can. Yeah, you just you just have like a foot standing in the middle of the. So I am. Um, I'm just gonna kind of uh, stand on top of the the tree stump that I've just kind of well, you know dead body yeah, tree stump. You, you just got you just got like a wood. There's just a wooden foot standing in the yeah. mud, basically. Now. So I stand on top of it and just kind of raise my uh you know still slightly glowing from the fights uh, sword in the air and just go. Gorilla, I hope I made you proud. Thank you for bestowing me with such amazing. I've forgotten the word. Might, Might. power. Those things. <laughs> wow. Courage, strength, anything. Radiance. Right. Radiance was the word I was looking for. Yeah, radiance. There you go. And I, I, right. I, I, I turn to uh, Alora, uh, Alora and Delilah and be like, look at me, look at me, I'm, I'm glowing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if you guys don't mind, I'll go ahead and back to my DM station and we will pick up from there. Sounds good. So after getting a significant amount of lumber now, after destroying um, the tree people in combat, they are now, you guys are now left in the foreboding bogs. Silence has now fallen across the land as the th there are still three trees around you that are not scattered, um, but they do not show signs of movement. Can I go up to one and just prod it with my sword? You still can, yeah. And you, you prod it with your sword. Yeah, I just go up and just give it a little, little poke. Does not do anything. Whew. Um... I kind of like, you know, still in quite high spirits, uh, turn to Evan to go, come on, bring it in. That was a good fight. E end of fight, family hug. <laughs> and as I'm walking no, towards them as I do this. Um, um, presumably they either walk towards me or I get, I get to them. As, uh, as I embrace them, uh, I use lay on hands uh, on both of them. Um... Just, I, I, want, I want to actually double check this with you, Dry Bones. Is it meta to ask a player how many hit points have you lost so I know how much to heal, or do I have to... You can say how, how hurt are you. I can only say how hurt are you. Okay. I, mean, I would just say if you, how hurt are you, then you could be like, pretty hurt. Yeah, okay, that's fine. It, it, I just wanted to ask whether I could ask for exact numbers, because I know they've both I, they both took yeah, hits in can. that fight. You, I mean, out, out of game, you can say how many how much, how okay, much okay. HP but, you have. Bria, how much have you, how much you off your max? Um... I know you got slammed. Fifteen. And Bunny, how much are you off your max? I know you took a hit. Fourteen. Well, that's perfect. I have 30 lay, lay on hands. So, yeah, whilst I'm kind of embracing them, uh, my hands kind of start to glow. And I use lay on hands, one hand on each of them. Um, 14 to Bunny, 15 to Rhea, uh, which leaves me with one lay on hands remaining. Um, actually, I should double check my lay on hands. I just want to check something. Uh, it's your... Oh, wait, I actually have more now. With that pool, you can restore total number of hit points equal to your paladin level times five. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, so which... Yes, yeah, it has gone up when I leveled up, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, cool. So, um, 
And then uh, after that, I spend my last spell slot. Uh, so I now have zero. Uh, I use, I kind of like put my hand on myself um, and cast uh, Cure Wounds. Uh, there you go. Uh, oh, no, that didn't actually cast it. Uh, hello? Oh, I know, I know why it comes up here. Boom, a level one. I cast Cure Wounds on myself uh, to heal myself. Uh, there you go. Uh, six health. Um, and whilst my hand is on me, I use my final lay on hands point, which is one. So I'm long story short, I'm going to heal myself seven hit point of Rooney. Um, and with my, uh, you know, once I've done that, I'm kind of going to unembrace uh, the two of them and say, well, that was uh, not something we were expecting today. But shall we, shall we carry on? Uh, if we're lucky, you know, I want to try and get as far as we can before next nightfall, uh, so that we. Uh, we get to Droga by uh, the end of tomorrow. Yeah, I guess that's for the best. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I, and I kind of noticed that Delilah's like, uh, you know, a little bit sul sulky, and I kind of just like again put my arm around her and be like, "Oh, come on, that was a good fight." We, I mean, she, and I kind of point to Laura and go, "She has all does well against." Wood. So uh yeah, uh hopefully we fight some more trees in the future because I felt very secure behind her. <laughs> um and yeah, and with that I kind of start like pushing us forward into a you know, start walking away. Okay. So you guys are getting pretty close to that you you would notice at this point that Charlie you'd know from your memory as Lyris that you're getting pretty close to Dro Droda as it's not too far of a trip, but um, you guys continue for the rest of the day and arrive at nighttime, and you guys realize that you'll be at Droda first thing. Um, not first thing in the morning, but I would say maybe afternoon, beginning of the afternoon. So um, let's go ahead and do, if anybody wants to do anything before they go to sleep tonight, otherwise we can go ahead and go straight into night watches. Uh, no, uh, you know, no, normal sort of thing. Um you know, setting up camp, campfire, although I will kind of, uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Delilah's just keeping to herself, really, and she's, she's reading her book, but, like, usually she's just be kind of, like, flipping through it because she's read it so many times, but, like, this time she's proper, like, she's really scrutinizing the book now and is reading it very in depth. Okay. Um... All right. For the first time in a while, Alora's going to look down on her wrist because she still has her bracelet that I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the series. And oh. she's kind of just looking at it and, uh, you know, kind of smiling in a little way. Uh, you know, just kind of just admiring it before bed. Okay. Fair enough. So um, let's go ahead and do watch order. Who wants to take first, second, and third? Uh, presumably the same in? Presumably the same order that we did before. Lyra's will offer to go first. Okay. You know, I'm still, I'm still quite, you know, adrenaline. Even with our walk, I'm still quite adrenaline filled from that fight, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, welling over all of the, you know, all the hits. Um, so yeah, I, I, Lara's gonna just chill uh, and take first watch. All right, so go ahead, Charlie, and um, roll a perception check for me. Twelve. Okay. So yeah, you you keep a um, good watch of the night, and nothing really seems to keep your attention. Pretty boring night. Uh, pretty, but still boring. Um, Delilah, your turn. Got five. You are not interested in watching the horizon. You are just reading your book <laughs> and occasionally glancing up to keep watch, but luckily nothing seem nothing um comes upon your camp or disturbs your sleep during that time as well. Cool. And then Aurora, you you rolled an 18, so you keep a vigilant watch, then the entire time you're pretty well rested at this point. And once again, no nothing seems to wake your attention. All right. So you guys all wake up. It is a brand new day. Um, and yeah, you guys are, you guys, it's it's around nine o'clock. You guys slept in a bit more, but you can you can get some good time and get there maybe around one o'clock if you guys really go for it. I've lynch putting all my spell slots back. Um, yeah, so we get in the morning. Uh, I will turn to uh, Alora and um, 
like you kind of I walk up to Laura in the morning and you can just kind of hear Laris's belly rumbling and echoing inside his armor. Um and just uh, goes, Alora, I uh I don't suppose you have a, a spare ration that you can pass my way for today. Um I'll uh, I'll make up I'll make it up to you uh, when we get to Droda. Of course I do. I have three left, so I will be removing two rations from my bag, uh, giving one to Lyris and one for myself. Oh, thank you. And like, Lyris just takes the, the ration. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll say you, you have some berries, so you gave some berries to uh, Salem as well for food. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, otherwise, I think you guys are able to continue on in the day, and what a excruciating day in the uh, swamp it is as you guys go and walk through the heat and mosquitoes and such. Not a very fun time like it has been this entire time in the foreboding bogs. But finally, after finally being able to exit the foreboding bogs after this length of the journey, and out of the stupid swamp, <laughs> you guys are able to see ash and land ground. Or it is so refreshing to you to being able to be back to land that you're more familiar with and no longer have the element of the unknown, at least in, in the wild. As far as everybody else, you guys, um, after getting to ash and land territory, walk literally just a little bit more. And in full view, you see Droda. And at this point, every make a perception check for me, please. Just check the landscape for such. Perception for 16. Iris does not give a shit. And or did you can you roll a perception for me? Yeah, sorry, I was looking for it. <laughs> not 20. Ooh, very nice. Okay. So everybody's able to, to pers- um keep up with this and make it makes it fairly obvious especially for Rhea and bunny um you can as you kind of crest over the hill that start that like begins the ashen lands you guys see the sprawling landscape that the ashen lands is known for you see the tree the green trees that kind of form like a dense sort of jungle like in certain areas that they weren't already kind of cut down to manage so it's not too wild um you see droda in itself um, but when you look at Drodo a little bit, it's different. You can see in Drodo, you can see there are plumes of smoke cylinders coming from the town. Um, and in particular, everybody's able to perceive the smoke cylinders, and you can see fire is going all throughout this the city. Um, in particular, Rhea and Bunny are able to see through this fairly kind of thick tree line you're able to perceive um, a number of catapults, ballistas, and um, shining glints of armor running into the forest and are being managed. Like the the catapults are launching fl- like these like flaming rocks that are going and impacting Androda. Um, ballistas are being launched into the city, causing mayhem. Um, and you can see Steelfish Legion soldiers are f- starting to flood into the area, you assume, with the glints of armor. Um, and you can see, because you got, because Bunny, you rolled so high, and you guys all put, through, put together the intuition, the, the attack itself looks pretty surrounded. The, um, the, it, there's, there, there are soldiers rushing in from the, um, the west, the north, and the east. So from all directions, except from your direction, the south. So, um, and then you just see a large plume of smoke and fire starting to spread throughout the city. Oh, snap. And that is where we're going to end it. Well, I guess our chances of getting a nice bed for the night is going to be quite slim. Or our shopping spree. We're never going to have a normal day again. (laughs) No, we aren't, are we? (laughs) It's never a normal day. God damn. Awesome. We'll see y'all. I am excited to continue. Yeah. We got uh, not long till our next session, so I can't wait to continue this. Very it's nice. Be great. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, let's go. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap up, shall we? So, thank you so much, everybody, for sticking with us through this episode. We enjoyed having you along for the ride, oh so much. Thank you for hanging out. Um, we love you guys so so much. Um, and we will go ahead and see you guys next episode of Dungeons and Chickens. See you guys. See you later.